Yeah, I was going to say, before you left, yeah. I was like, your camera is like, chef's kiss. Uh, let me just Forget. get it. Right. Right, Forget it. Second, have, you, have you been watching the feed? Forget. What? Have, have you been watching the feed, Dean? What's the feed? The feed. Because he just did the, he did fucking fresh, that's, that's what that thing was that we were just talking yeah. about. He just did it. I've been watching the stream, and I never, no, I've never I've... even heard it called that before until Whoa. the conversation. Yeah, you just, you just, you just fucking. I mean, I'm recording. That's fucked this, up. That, that's <laughs> gonna be the, that's gonna be the the preamble before the for the before the logo. What happens? When it comes to it, in the the, the thing. Oh, maybe they did. Oh, shall I do the intro? Oh, absolutely. Mm. After you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a very special and long awaited episode of Not Another Conspiracy Podcast with in Detroit, Michigan, Mr. Dean Sultan. Hello. Need nice to, to see you. Nice to see you all. And in I York, was gonna do I was gonna do a Michigan accent, but no. <laughs> in Hot York. Ooh. J J J J J J the, Jackson. J you just had to hide the, the funny in my armpit. The, J I'm too sexy for sleeves. J. <laughs> it's too hot, man. Too hot. Bit warm. Bit warm. We're too hot. Too hot. And too hot. Somewhere else, <laughs> Mr. Ben Some, Mills. I'm somewhere in s I'm not sunny, sunny South Philadelphia. South end on sea. South end on sea. South end. Mr. Ben Where? Mills. Home of non say. and now a non-league football team. After really, it yeah, happened. Oh, happened, yeah. oh not shit! Not that I give a fuck, but you know, no. <laughs> it's been it's been happening for a long time though. Like it's been a like downward, that... it's been a downward spiral of what? shit football. One of the I best mean, ever since you got that werewolf as the goalkeeper. That's, <laughs> that's what happens. He's used to just doing slam dunks, and you stuck him in goal. He's just true, running yeah. down the pitch. Yeah, I remember but... how like terrible that stadium is, Roots Hall for South End. Uh, there was there was a cup game years and years and years ago where Canvey Island, my town, were playing against South End at Roots Hall. Don't get me wrong, they were winning like two 0 at the time. Mm. And then all the South End fans in one stand started trying to sing something like "Where's Your Caravan" or something like that or whatever. So and they were like, all right, they've got Canvey. the banter and stuff like that. And all they're doing is giving it the entire game. Then the heavens open up. Starts fucking pissing it down in the away stand. We're fine. Like there's this, this stand is perfectly good. In their stand, there are holes everywhere, and all it was was like a fucking log flume of water just pouring on the supporters. It was great. It was fucking superb. But that was like 15 years ago or something. Yeah, it's and they've insane, only just mate. got to non-league. Non-league. It's yeah. no surprise. That the chairman of Southford United Football Club is basically a money grabbing piece of shit. He's a Jeff oh. Bezos character, but without. Any like with less skill, yeah. uh, yeah, for making with less money. skill. They bought Fawcett's Farm, which is down the road from the studio. Um, okay, to build a new stadium, and that was 15 years ago. Uh, <laughs> and they just, just got hoard, they got the hoarding up 10 years ago, and it's just nothing happened with it. But and that's just that's South End in a nutshell at the moment, yeah. though. Like, I'm the surprised they've not opened phone shops and charity shops there. It's there you like, go, clothing shop and a phone repair shop. Now, the clothing one. shops are gone now. Oh, they're gone, gone. Yeah, oh. Top Man. There is no more Top Man on the high street. That's it, I mean, it's gone everywhere, shit. isn't it? Like, like, and South End was just a Top Man Top Shop clone. Like, it's like just well, I don't know. During the music scene when we were a little bit younger, Ben, it just felt like outside of Top Man and Top Shop, there would just be a new clone of whoever. Like yeah. every other day, like boop, and like the simulation. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Everyone was like where everyone was a walking billboard for fucking Top Man and Top Shop. And now it's ended. And it's over now. It's game over. Everyone's gonna be wearing pixels soon. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the only clothing you can get. That's why I'm sacrificing my sleeves now just so I can get used to it. <laughs> so I can get like 
a nice little pixel strap that nice. comes out here. You can to hide this fucking pixel. to hide these bingo wings. Yeah, <laughs> more than one pixel. Um, Only so, the whole Mario dungaree. Today, I think I think everyone knows what this episode is about because it was saying the title because it people will aren't stupid. <laughs> And if, but, you're, if you're listening to it without like knowing, you're a maniac, and thank you. And thank you. Crazy. But now we're about to spoil that YouTube by telling you what it's all about. Today's episode is 9-11, part one. The, the, the I, I think... <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, well... <laughs> what? <laughs> as, 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 soon as, you, as soon as you were about to announce it, my internet just went off. So it was just <laughs> like... And I genuinely thought it was an anticipation thing, but it wasn't. It just frozen. And I think, <laughs> I guess, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing you've said it now, so I have it said just it. Kind of turned it turned into audio bits. The episode is about nine eleven, part one. There we go. Okay. Right, I thought <laughs> you were... <laughs> I was joking. I genuinely thought it happened again. <laughs> It's, I find, I don't know how, um, I don't know, ironic 9-11 is, and even when we're like the main uh, area that it occurred being ground zero, because I think a lot of people feel that 9-11 is their ground zero when it comes to conspiracy theories. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't think it was my first one because I believe, I believe we did a true crime conspiracy episode on it, but I, I, I feel like Jack Ripper was really my first kind of conspiracy. Yeah, Jackie R, yeah. Yeah, but I'd say it's a it's a staple. Uh, it's our generation's JFK, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We were literally just having the same conversation an hour earlier as well, it's... which is even weirder. I, yeah, the I don't know if I'm going to last this one. Like. <laughs> <laughs> The synchronicity. I mean, not is only is it because it's so fucking long, but the, everything's just going crazy in the first ten minutes. I'm just going to lose my mind. I think, <laughs> and I'm not yeah. drinking for once. Uh, yeah. And that's not out of choice, right? That's because you can't. You haven't got any booze in the house. That's because there's no beer in the house. Yeah, just <laughs> a big old bottle of water. A big old <laughs> bottle of water for JJ. Oh, he just looks like a gym rat. Massive gallon bottle. Of bingo water. wings. Uh, full of <laughs> nine. Hag Hagrid Hagrid goes to the gym. That's it, yeah. Hagrid Hag Hagrid goes. stays hydrated. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, hydrated. One thing that I feel like I've I don't know. I guess I've learned um, about the whole nine eleven conspiracy, or I think I've probably the, it's it it's the conspiracy that has helped me mature and look at a lot of conspiracies with like beyond the curtain you know because it's it's bizarre how deep and how far back into the past this one event mm. like the repercussion of things from the past and like this was the the the, the i hate yeah. to for want of a better word but the explosion of yeah. all of these things occurring in the past well that's if to. you believe that it actually happened and it wasn't a hologram oh there's that yes yeah. there's that so that, i mean the only no, true theory it's the only <laughs> real theory let's be honest <laughs> planes <laughs> sky well, apparently it was a, a b-52 bomber. vaporized weapon yes yeah, please. A vaporized weapon and missiles fired from the Woolworths building so yeah um, what was yeah. it yeah well, but uh, i was gonna so, say there's I heard so that many one. conspiracies that it it needs they need their own episode so they need their own parts and this we're is not obviously... ever going to talk about it again because it is the most ridiculous but there is a conspiracy theory that people believe that the day towers never even existed that's the best one <laughs> and that, and that's it was one it was a centralized hub for control they believe that because they believed because it's the world trade center they believe that imaginary people were put in there every day to make people believe that the money, the money system in New York is the hub of the money system. It's a mini North Korea. Yeah, the whole <laughs> thing that? was projected. I was like, yeah, good one. That's brilliant. Though. Good I like one. one. Oh, I immediately went, yes, <laughs> I believe buy -in. you. Instant buy-in on that one there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, oh. well, I guess, I guess, so the, oh, let's explain. This is probably more of a history podcast today, guys. There will be obviously the same hilarity, the same, the same nonce jokes. You know, same. There'll probably be a nonce joke here and there. Obviously, Bin Laden nonce. There will be. Well, actually, a, cave dwelling nonce. 
he, we go. We he delivered would, immediately. Do you know, he would. <laughs> this is a little <laughs> Sama bin Laden fact for you. He would almost give. He would give up his, when he'd finish with a wife. He wouldn't kill her. Like it wasn't a Henry the Eighth type. He would just give her as a gift. And that would be the divorce would be he would give it to her as a gift to like it's like almost like a bonus like a christmas bonus to his favorite workers or uh oh really underlings. yeah he'd be like yeah, yeah i have a wife because i i'm assuming they'd probably be quite thick ah <laughs> uh, you see that's that, that's a lie they're horrendous i've seen one of his wives really really bad let's i let's be real though is, like there we go what a, chat, what a chat move just like yeah. Yeah, employee of the month. Here, have wife number seven. You can have the wife. <laughs> the wife, she's yours. Congratulations. What, what Christmas bonus. Move. Not that I believe yeah, it's Christmas, it's Christmas bonus. bonus, you know. One more present for you, one less for me. Um, ah, inshallah. Amazing. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. And that's this is going to be fun. <laughs> it's not, because I didn't um, do a chef's kiss at the end. Anyway. <laughs> Did he go, I've got 99 virgins, but my wife ain't one. Is that what he <laughs> said? As he was yes. hand, handing her over. I love Jay-Z and his ridiculous <laughs> songs about money. Yes. That's the one. I like Notorious P.I.G. More money, less problems, no? <laughs> I'm not, oh, get, I'm not gonna get you. through this. I've missed you, Bruce. I've missed you, Bruce. <laughs> right, let's start, shall right. we? So, there were, so on September 11, 2001, there was a, a terrorist attack. But the reason that, that terrorist attack happened through research and reading and listening to podcasts, documentaries and stuff, kind of traced the origins of that attack back to 1949. That's insane. Insane. And 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 it all started when a uh, guy called Syed Kutub went to the United States on a scholarship to study its educational system. He spent several months at the Colorado, Colorado State College of Education, now the University of North Colorado in Greenlee, Colorado. Over two years, he worked and studied at Wilson Teachers College in Washington, D.C., College, Colorado State College for Education uh, and Stanford University. He visited major cities of the United States and spent time in Europe on his journey home. On his return to Egypt, Kutter published The America That I Have Seen, where he became explicitly critical of the things he had observed in the United States, eventually encapsulating the West more generally in its materialism, individual freedoms, economic systems, racism, brutal boxing matches, poor haircuts, and superficial <laughs> superficiality I, in I conversations and friendships. I thought um, I thought the forties look were pretty stylish, to be honest. Was, like, yeah, into the fifties as well, though. You know, yeah, that's when you start I, getting all that necromantics kind of like fucking teddy boy stuff that yeah. people are obsessed with now. It almost sounded like you were describing the UFC match this weekend with Paddy Plimblett. Oh, that is oh, yeah, that terrible like he, haircut. That is, a, that is a haircut. And there was brutal boxing. I mean, yeah. I, think he can he wear, was... I think he can wear any hairstyle he wants. Like, because he'll no kick your head in. Otherwise. Yeah, because yeah. he'll just cave your face yeah. in. He, he yeah, also don't put, don't put that in. Don't put that part in. He said there was a lot of restrictions <laughs> on divorce, uh, enthusiasm for sports, lack of artistic feeling, animal-like mixing of genders, which went on, <laughs> went, which went on even in churches. He says, oh. <laughs> and strong support for the new Israeli state. He was ah. appalled by what he perce perceived as the loose sexual openness of American men and women. He I also like how he just. Sorry, sorry. I like how he just slips in kind of the, the one other thing that's quite quite uh, important of it all. Oh, they, 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 they men and oh, women together in church. They played football. The, the they Israelis. supported the Israelis. <laughs> they didn't do divorce too well. They like music. The Israelis. Like, yeah, oh, my <laughs> Yeah, the Israelis they didn't get do it. to divorce too well. Part I was like, well, they, what do you mean we didn't execute our wives when right. we divorced them? Exactly. Oh, oh, or well, give them over we as a bonus. That one up. <laughs> it, he also <laughs> said uh, the American is primitive in its artistic taste. I try and do it. The American okay. is primitive in his artistic taste, both in what he enjoys as art and in his artistic works. Jazz music is his music of choice. Yeah, but jazz sucks. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, say, yeah. I agree with him. Jazz sucks. 
I'm pretty sure that was. Uh, but we will blow up their towers. The jazz, we will sure blow up their towers. Proper, proper Gandhi wrote a song about that, I think. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, they did? I'll find how it, shit yeah. jazz music is. And also how bad Israeli, like Israel is. Israel is probably as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't like much, do they? Yeah, I think. Is this uh, an interview with Egyptian uh, Saeed Kutta or someone from Propaganda? <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, probably we're something finding out here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so Kutta concluded that American life significant aspects were primitive and shocking. He saw Americans as numb to faith in religion, faith in art, and faith in spiritual values altogether. His Jewish and the Israelis, his yeah, and the Israelis, <laughs> his U.S. experiences believed to have formed his rejection of Western values and move him and his move towards is Islamism upon returning to Egypt. So it basically it, his trip to America radicalized him against <laughs> like into Islam, which is That sounds so like in don't 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 you look at brochures before you go on your own. Well holidays. he was sent there to learn about the education system and how they because obviously at this point Egypt and Iran and the Middle East was very becoming more and more westernized. Right, uh, right. It was, of it's, course, only yeah. in, it's only in, in the last 10, 15, well, probably long now, actually, because we're in 2020. But it's only in the last yeah. 30 years, 40 years that it's gone back. It's gone back to being it's regressed. How it is. Yeah. Um, because I, I, keep, I saying... keep thinking, I think it's I, in my head forever, it's 2004, which, like, that's the time I think we're at. Does that make sense? No, I've no. I've got yeah, Jeff Bezos' like... clock. That's what the problem is. Yeah, and, and you don't I have Jeff Bezos's you... clock. No, I do understand million. what you mean. I do understand what you mean by that feeling in general. Like, I still don't feel more or less the same time. I think mine's 2006, where I kind of reference a lot of current sort of like reality now. I reference back to 2006. Yeah. Like, I'm still enjoying fashion, music, and and sorts that I did in that time. So yeah. this shit feels close still. Yeah, I, I still feel, because obviously everyone knows that the future started in 2004 and before 2004, <laughs> it was the past. You know, in if you look at technology, and that's a technology thing, like as of, and it's got, and that has got a lot to do with 9-11. Before 2001, uh, 2004, obviously HD cameras and CCTV was, was not, HD CCTV right. like, writing to the memory card was not completed correctly. Recover data. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone listening. That's just JJ's JJ's camera's just gone. Speaking a bit of technology, with. JJ's camera <laughs> has just stopped working. Um, but that's fine because we're, we're talking about this thing and he can jump in afterwards. Yeah, it, I, I feel like 2004 was when the future started, you know, broadband internet. You know, well, we yeah, had that internet. before, but the internet got better. There was more access yes. to the internet. But in it was like it was wide and everywhere, and it was a household that, thing. Exactly. Before that, people didn't get their news off the internet. People got they their didn't. news. People got their news in newspapers and on TV, and so anyway, that, we're completely digressing from where we were. But that's <laughs> I think like that's when I say like you know until like twenty when I reference something, I kind of reference things as two thousand four or five, and then so right. ten years ago for me is nineteen ninety five. Yes, yeah, and so now, now you're saying that that the the eastern uh, side, well, the Middle East Middle in eastern, general yeah. was very very westernized, well, even up to more a, and more westernized. Yeah, because you look at some... pictures in the seventies of Afghanistan, and it looked like it it looked like London. They were all yeah. in bikinis, short skirts, yeah. like. It's Quite crazy. Cool. And just, the same with Iran. Just to, well. uh, just to mm. talk about uh, another conspiracy theory briefly. Oh, sorry. No, I can hear. What's you. Up? Hello. I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear. All <laughs> oh, right. No, it, my, it, it just keeps going out. It's awful. Um, but you look really, really pretty, mate. I'm still talking about the uh, the other conspiracy theory about the <laughs> when you guys believe the world sort of ended or whatever. There is right. actually a theory that the world did end in July 1999. Just putting it out there. Really? We'll go that's, to that one day. <laughs> so the question that we had on the this, this Q and A thing earlier on is that's the fucking most stupidest conspiracy theory because I'm still here and I was alive yeah. in that time period. So, <laughs> yeah. um, we'll look into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can, they can, that's wrong. Yeah. So, um, so in 1952, Egypt's pro-Western government was overthrown by a nationalist free officers movement headed by Gamal Abdel Nasser. 
Both Kutuk and the Muslim Brotherhood welcomed the coup d'etat against the monarch's gov against the monarchist government, which they saw as an un-Islamic and subservient to the British imperialism, and enjoyed a close relationship with the movement before and immediately following the coup. Nasser would go to the house of Said Kutuk and ask him for ideas about the revolution. Many members of the Brotherhood expected Nasir to establish an Islamic government. However, the cooperation between the Brotherhood and free officers, which marked the revolution's success, soon soured as it became clear that the secular nationalist ideology of Nazirism was incompatible with the Islamic Brotherhood. So, like, so they, they hadn't even discussed what the plan was. No, they overthrew <laughs> they just it. Succeeded. Succeeded, and then realized that they both believed in completely different things. One, yeah, they don't story. like each other. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> that, feel, that sounds like a deleted scene from Four Lions. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so. So once Kuta realized that so Nazir good. had taken advantage of the secrecy between the three officers and the brother, he promptly quit. Uh, so he let Kuta quit, and I guess that probably soured him even more. Uh, Nazir right, then yeah. tried to persuade Kuta, Kuta by offering him a position he wanted in Egypt's uh, is, uh, Egypt exist its kingship, except its kingship. So he was offered. He said, "You could do anything." If you support me, except right. for the kingship, because that's me. I'm the king. Yeah, he did like, like be anything else. immunity from prosecution. Yeah. Um, cool. We'll give you anything you want in government, where it's Ministry of Education, Ministry of Arts, because it refused every offer, having understood the reality of Nasir's plans. Upset that Nasir would not enforce a government based on Islamic ideology, Kutu and other brother members plotted to assassinate him in 1954. The attempt was foiled and Kutu was jailed um, soon afterwards. So Kutu went to jail. And that is where he um, he uh, basically started meeting people and stuff and kind of joined. Where making, yeah. So this period okay. saw the composition of his of his two important work. Oh, yeah. So he wrote books, basically, to like ra that radicalize people. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Radical encyclopedias almost. Mm. So almost like a new Bible. The new Bible. 2.0. So yeah, he, yeah, the period saw the composition of his two most important works, Commentary of the Quran, Fizil, I can't say it, In the Shade of the Quran, it was called, and a, and a, okay. and a, um, and a manifesto of political Islam called um, uh, Milestones. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I knew you'd go for the translation. I went straight for the translation. These works <laughs> represent the final form of Kutuk's thought, encompassing his radically anti-secular and anti-Western claims based on his inter interpretations of the Quran, Islamic history, and the social and political problems of Egypt. The school of thought he inspired has been known as Kutubism. 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 They do choose some words, don't they? Yeah, so Kutub was let out of prison at the end of 1964 at the behest of the Prime Minister of Iraq. Abdul Salam Ooh. Arif. For only eight months before being rearrested in August 1965, <laughs> he was accused of plotting to overthrow the state and subject <laughs> to what was some kind <laughs> of uh, a show trial. Many of the charges placed on Kutuk in court were taken directly from um, the, miles, the book Milestones, and he yep. had adamantly supported his written statements. The trial accumulated in a death sentence of Kutuk and six other members of the Muslim Brotherhood. He was also sentenced to death as part of his conspiracy to assassinate the president and other Egyptian officials and person personalities. Though he was not the instigator or leader of the actual plot, on 29th August 1966, he was executed by hanging. I say, he sounds like a piece of work, him, doesn't he? What? Bloody I, hell. I mean, he's got an he's an ideolo ideologist, isn't he? He's got an ideal, he's got his, he's got his thoughts. And he basically, he, he just... I think he just hated the West and he was massively into Islam and massively into the Quran. And massively into the idea of uh, like just ultra power by the sounds of it as well. Mm. Christ he, almighty. But obviously his, his, the way his, he, his writings and his books then went on and the Muslim Brotherhood went on to form those ideologies that people in the, the Mujahideen, the Taliban. Yeah, Taliban, Al-Qaeda. And... Yeah, all those like basically the, all the warlords that came out of yeah that was kind of like the hand he wrote the handbook yeah he wrote the wow. handbook for the beliefs and how the quran and how the quran should be extreme um, islam yeah yeah it's how the basically. quran should have been interpreted because a lot of people because ah. there's different ways the quran's interpreted i don't know enough about it to talk about it now but i know no, of that, course yeah, yeah yeah so this is this is the extreme um anti-western islam islamic 
translation of the Quran. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's JJ how... was right. A new religion. It was. And it was, yeah. And obviously once those people start getting to power, then like especially Iran, I can't remember who who and who took over in Iran that then obviously it went back to being very fundamentalist. Yeah, yeah. Um Saudi Arabia is an, a fundamentalist state. Um you know, most of the UAE is as well. There's a fly yeah. in here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's that's where I think it started for me. Yep, yep. And we're moving on now to section two, Soviets so, in Afghanistan. Yeah, so for me, and before because you're gonna I'm gonna let you read this bit, Dean. Okay. Uh, and go through this bit because I think you understand you know most of this anyway, don't you? Um, I, bl- uh, I, I yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I do. I do think that. Well, it was one of the first things that m- made me realize that nine eleven didn't just happen on nine eleven. I remember stumbling yeah. across a paper cutting of Osama bin Laden in a British newspaper, like from the past. I think it was the Telegraph, and it was like young, uh, young Arab, uh, whatever, blah blah like a title and then bin laden um set to um make new roads and it was basically implying that it's oh i'm gonna bring afghanistan and this area it's infrastructure uh, like like into into the modern age because obviously he's, he was part of the big one of the biggest construction firms if not the biggest in the arab world his dad owned the biggest construction uh, that, company yeah. In, yeah, in Saudi Arabia. That was employed by the world, basically. Mm. And that's kind of then what led me. And I was like, well, hold on a minute. What? And then within this particular article, it was talking about um, George Bush Sr. Uh, having Bush, meetings yeah. and funding uh, a lot of it. And then I was well, just... Well, the CIA like, funded a lot of it, didn't it? it was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where I looked further. And then there was the CIA bits. And why were they, uh, why did America even begin to start donating money to them? And then it led to the Soviets. And it was like, wait a minute, yeah. the Soviets were over there at some point? Oh, yeah. Um, for that but, damn precious oil. Anyway, though, sorry, Ben, go on. Was- yeah, so it's this for me, and well, I think this for everyone, this is how, this is the catalyst. The, yes. The, this, this is what created... Al Qaeda, which is basically LinkedIn for terrorists. <laughs> LinkedIn for terrorists. That's what it is. It's true. It's, it's it is. For okay, but, so but, you know, but without with less humble bragging, it's like not loads of like terrorists going. Well, today I saw a man starving on the street, so I blew him up. <laughs> that would be LinkedIn for terrorists, I think. Here is here is me sacrificing. He's wearing Guns and Roses t shirt. <laughs> Real. Oh man! Uh, no holding back. No holding back. <laughs> <laughs> no holding back today. Uh, anyway, okay. It's been too go. long, so it's like it's this been is, too long. It's been it's too, too long, <sighs> and people. It's, it's want... been too long since there's been a nonce joke for crying out loud. There's not been one. There's not been not one. yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay. The Soviet-Afghan war was a conflict wherein insurgent groups as well as smaller Maoist groups fought a nine-year guerrilla war against the Soviet army and the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan government throughout the 1980s, mostly in the Afghan countryside. Um, One thing that was crazy about it was the fact it was, well, the Afghan military, I'm sure we'll touch on it at some point, but like guerrilla warfare, like incredibly smart and which... Kind of surprised me. Trained by the US Army. (laughs) There you go. So there was this Vietnam War that we lost, but we learn a lot from it. Yeah, we definitely... um, There you go. (laughs) I've I've definitely put a a section in there um, about how basically the the Americans were like... Because obviously the communists did a lot of funding for the Vietnam War against and and helped the, the Viet Cong against the the us americans america's like yeah. whoa well, he's like, not related nah. to king kong is he uh, well, <laughs> viet kong yeah he's all oh, right i just again the screen just cut out and i just heard you talking about guerrilla warfare and that that <laughs> i literally just came in and was, i just heard <laughs> Woo, viet king kong. Kong. <laughs> oh these are these are hot takes people hot takes no one oh. has, has no one ever gone guerrilla warfare and viet kong and gone king kong 
You were probably yeah, the first person I've ever heard put those together. I think I'd start a new <laughs> army just called King Kong. There's, that's it. It's just <laughs> that guerrilla warfare. There's actually, there's there's actually a pizza, a pizza where I'm from in York called King Kong's Dick. <laughs> I just don't get it. Like it's a pizza. And it's just got sausages on it, but it's just called King Kong's Dick. It's not like it's not a wrap pizza or anything. It's just implying that the sausage on it is King Kong's Dick. <laughs> That's so uh, typically yeah. British. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, but, but now sorry. I want a pizza <laughs> and a dick. To be fair, oh, they're probably man. part of Al Qaeda as well. Those guys are on that because there's some <laughs> fucking weird names on there. There's a lot of like hot nipples and slippery nipples. I was like, I always thought a slippery nipple was like a Bailey's with Coca Cola or some shit. But like, apparently not. It's just a pizza with chili on it. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. I would have yes. if if I was going to do a slippery nipple, I'd make a pizza, and it was a pizza. I'd have a pizza, and I'd have one bit of pepperoni on it, but I'd put like some sauce on it. So much it, cheese so, on it. Yeah, so it would <laughs> like it would slide around the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the pepperoni itself had to decide which slice it was on. Yeah, the, de- the delivery That's driver hilarious. just had to carry it perfectly straight, or yeah. it just like <laughs> who's getting the nipple. Uh. Oh, uh, slippery pizza. Worst pepperoni pizza ever. One, pie, one piece <laughs> yeah. of pepperoni. Uh, anyway. Uh, gorillas, uh, that's all. Right, yeah. Cut out again. Uh, okay. Right. Um, as Ben mentioned, though, the Russians uh, funding a lot of the uh, Vietnamese army during the Vietnam War. At this point, there, when the Afghan War and the Soviets were at war together, there was no surprise, to be honest, that America were probably like, ah, here we can uh, remember that funding you did for our enemy. Well, we've got a shit more funding than you can do. Yeah, right. You know, it's so it's no surprise. Supply yeah, and demand. It's fair. You know, and the, the CIA were like were involved in getting like bringing all these. The build they basically built the Mujahideen. Like they yeah, went they just, like this warlord and this warlord and this warlord. It. Let's get them together. Yeah. Fund the fuck out of them, like give like some some people. I think is it I like think... the the Louis Walsh of terrorists? So he's like <laughs> that guy would look great. That guy would look great. That guy's yeah. a crazy rock that star. Guy would look get, great that guy. get that guy. Get that guy and that day together. <laughs> They'd be great. <laughs> there we go. It's like you do flying like with red wings. Can you do? Can like... you do flying with red wings? <laughs> it's like we do flying <laughs> without landing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't hey! need. To... <laughs> I'm flying into a building. <laughs> Awful. It's, it's like we yeah. It, 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 so basically, it's like they were picking football teams, like we used to do in the school playground. They'd be like, yeah. "I want you on my side, <laughs> you on my side." All like all the best kids being picked, and all the shit warlords just like, Ooh, got yeah, the, the just because we protect the self. The ones with hooks <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. 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 You I could be right. goalkeeper. <laughs> okay, uh, in December 1979, in the midst of the Cold War, the Soviet 40th Army invaded Afghanistan uh, in order to prop up the communist government of the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan. Put get, a, get a different, get a Put different pa. political party name. Christ Almighty! P- it, probably, yeah. it probably does. It just doesn't translate well. Right. I bet nah, it's got yeah, really probably. good. I bet it rolls off the tongue in Afghani. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they wanted to put. Um, they wanted to do this to uh, against uh, the growing insurgency within the country. Uh, at the time, the United States had been making headway in the Middle East at Moscow's expense, successfully courting Egypt, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and others. The Soviet Union feared the loss of its communist proxy in Afghanistan. Uh, this proxy war had the potential to be the Soviets' Vietnam. And Americans wanted to make sure of it. They funded and provided, as we mentioned a moment ago, uh, arms to the Afghan rebels known as the Mujahideen. Yeah, they didn't just fund them, which we'll go into, but they actually they went there and they went right. This is how you this is how you fight. This is like, and you see, yeah, you you see a lot of these training videos, like of it, it was really bizarre because. Obviously, when everything had uh, started unfolding after 9-11, when we were younger, we were used to seeing these like particular training camp videos on TV and like the, obviously the media being like, this is the enemy, everyone. Like, this is what they're doing. Look at them. But then going back and watching some of these documentaries when it was documenting members of the CIA and the US government just mm-hmm. chilling out in Afghanistan with their arms crossed, 
watching a bunch of like Afghani rebels warming up as if they're about to go on at half time or something like that. It was so strange yeah. of all different shapes and sizes and they're all sitting there. That was one thing. They couldn't do star jumps properly, could they? In Didn't one they? video clip, in there's a particular video it's clip. A known, a, it's a known like crutch of the Afghans. That they, they just don't have rhythm or something like that. And they were getting them to- their legs out at the same time. They can only do opposites. It's they yeah, do wire was... jumps. I mean, I'm not going to lie. If you're in the army, the, one of the things you want to avoid doing is doing that. It's almost like a moving target. So <laughs> maybe they had the right idea. Because if you're spread completely, yeah, literally, you're just a, it was... a fucking I think you're saying, target. kiss me, kiss me. Fuck <laughs> <Yeah, smart laughs> <Smoke> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but Anyone who didn't get so... that reference, it was Team America. I did. It was so strange to see, like, doing the research for this, like, a bunch of CIA agents and the, the the like. I think it was the president or just the head of the CIA or something. Just watching yeah. them all warming up and not being able to do sort of the star jump routine. It was so bizarre. Yeah, I mean, I always uh, do the research on the enemy. I would say, or you know, the the people who you're gonna put the guns in the hands of. Like, right. I would immediately have just been like. Yeah, those guys are rubbish. Let's just yeah, put who, some other yeah. people out there. Who picked this prick over here that can't bloody touch his knees to his elbows in rhythm? <laughs> like, Ahmed, go on off you go, mate. See you later. You ain't playing. There's just a guy who's doing star jumps really fast, and we're like, we need him as a decoy. Like, <laughs> send him on the run, make him do loads of star jumps, and then just we'll just walk there and then you know shoot him off. <laughs> seems like the logical thing to do. The CIA oh, no. had engaged in uh, multiple operations in Afghanistan. The first major operation, codenamed Operation Cyclone, began in 1979. It was a program to arm and finance the Mujahideen fighters in Afghanistan prior to and during the military in intervention by the USSR. President Reagan had seen an expansion of the Reagan Doctrine, which aided anti-Soviet resistant movements. Uh, the program also supported militant Islamic groups that were favoured by the regime of the Muhammad Zal Zia Al Haq. Sorry, I'll repeat that. Muhammad Zia Al Haq. I'm quite proud of uh, working that one out uh, in neighbouring pa uh, Pakistan at the expense of other resistance groups that had also been fighting the Marxist oriented Democratic Republic of Afghanistan. Operation Cyclone was one of the longest and most expensive covert CIA operations ever undertaken, costing over 20 to $30 million per year in 1980 and rising to $630 million per year in 1987. Now, who was it that, who did the famous speech of the military industrial complex? That would be uh, Eisenhower. Wow. Uh, 630 yeah. million per year yeah did you know that so bananas they, i know it's it, it doesn't matter now because it's it, they're fucked anyway but after 9 11 do you know the deficit was completely wiped out in the, in the national debt it was they were they were they were up there like they they cleared all the debt and then obviously the financial crash happened and it all went again but no shit <laughs> i wonder i wonder where it came from uh, that sort of money bombing the nuts. fuck out of Afghanistan and Iraq, I think. Yeah, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I think so. Um, okay, continuing. Thus, over the course of the 1980s, the Soviet Union poured billions of dollars into the war in Afghanistan, and at its peak, more than 100,000 Soviet soldiers were fighting in the country. However, yeah, so the I've Afghan president. Sorry, go ahead. I've got a an actual fact, uh, not a, like a numerical value on um, how much uh, oh. the Soviet were pouring in, which I didn't write in here. But okay. it's, so the Soviet Union were putting in thirty five percent of its GDP. So that's how Whoa. A, a year into fighting this war, the thirty five percent of their country's own float. Yeah, Fuck. America has never put in more than five percent. Whoa! And yeah. Wow, so this was no this was like Russia... they, they basically wanted to bankrupt, right? They I don't think the way I think it probably I think I wrote this in here somewhere, but okay. they don't. I don't think they actually ever thought that they were going to beat them physically, just destroy them all. I think they right. were just it was just a number. It's like they can't do this forever. They can't do this forever, and just kept just if we the more we throw at them, the like it's yeah yeah it, yeah. That's crazy. 
I mean, that's probably why they started making bombs that out of milk bottles and sticking them under rocks. Like that's it's kind of kind of starting to make a lot of sense, really. Yeah. Yeah, and and it also makes you wonder that the the, the fact that all right, the Soviet Union collapsed, but most of Eastern Bloc Europe has never recovered. Like. It made, it's no wonder. Jesus Christ, I was completely unaware of that. 35%. Bloody hell. Uh, anyway, continuing on. Thus, over the course of nine... Oh, no, sorry, yeah, you stopped me there, didn't you? However, the Afghan resistance, the Mujahideen, was heavily supported by a wide variety of international actors, including the US, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Iran, China, and Egypt. In the end, the Mujahideen prevailed over the Soviet army, uh, as they were forced to withdraw from Afghanistan in February 1989, having lost like tens ten of thousands, ten, 10 years. They lost tens of thousands killed and wounded. Even after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Moscow continued to supply the arm, uh, and sorry, supply and arm the communist regime of Dr. Nijal Bullah. Uh, this was not enough, and Kabul fell to the Mujahideen in 1992. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then uh, the America left and the Taliban took over. <laughs> but again, well, we go into almost that. instantly, wasn't it? Again, it, oh. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the same um, happened again instantly. Yeah. 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 History repeating itself. I was going to yeah. say it's like the America. America. Was there any? Um, my curiosity was there any kind of like animosity after kind of? I guess the Afghani's were probably like, oh, America's. They are. Yeah, they're, they're actually interested in helping us. Like, oh, sweet! And as soon as like yeah. the, the mission accomplished, America must have just been like, "All right, cool, see you later, job done." Well, well, the we way I, friends anymore. The way what? I can't saw it is that the the Mujahideen were like, "We won, we won that," and the Americans were like, "No, we won that for you." Yeah. And then the Check Soviet and the Soviets were like, "No, we run out of money. We left." Like. So, they, so no one, no one would, no one had lost. No one, no one could admit that they won or lost. But the right, other people right. weren't letting anyone take the victory, and then like the Americans, were like right, we helped you. We did that for you. Now buy it. Not yeah, you gave your lives and you did all this for us. Now we're going to help you rebuild. They just went right. We did our job. The Soviets are gone. See you later. That's the way I see it. Yeah, the way that's exactly the way it looks to me, and that is why they're all fucking pissed off. <laughs> yep, yeah, that like one little tick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, funding from the CIA continued after 1989 as the Mujahideen battled the forces of Mohammed Najibullah's PDPA, <laughs> the uh, political party that was a mouthful during the civil war in uh, Afghanistan. That was a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Najib, what? Na Najibullah. Najibullah. Uh, uh, how many? <laughs> Sounds like a disease you'd catch out there. So yeah, um, uh, the civil war in Afghanistan between 1989 and 1992. After the, uh, after the withdrawal of Soviet troops, the CIA's objective was to topple the government of Mohammed Najibullah, uh, which had been uh, which had been formed under the Soviet occupation. The three main factions that the CIA supported were Ahmed Shah Massoud. Uh, Golbadin Hekmataya and he was the bad Jalal one. Yeah. He was the really bad one. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Jalal Jalaluddin Hakani. Another civil war developed oh, in 1990 as the Inter-Services Intelligence, the ISI and CIA supported uh, Golbadin Hekmata. Was it Gol Golbadin Hekmatia? I'll call him Golbadin for the time being. Uh, sought to violent, uh, violently eliminate all rivals, including the CIA-supported Ahmed Shah Massoud. Bloody hell. Yeah, he, Ahmed thought, Shah yeah, Massoud but... was was widely seen as the the best man for the job to take over okay. Afghanistan and re, re, like rebuild it and start again. Like he was um, seen. He's. The, I saw an interview with his brother, who talking about him because he was assassinated. Um, sure. And he was saying like. He 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 genuinely was looking to create a world where people could a, a country where people could just live and do their own and, and live happily and not be worried about freely war. essentially yeah. yeah wow no but wonder the, yeah no the wonder Taliban, the other guy was pissed the Taliban they offed him yeah yeah uh, continuing 
uh i've done the another another civil war bit apologies uh yes in um the different mujahideen factions could not agree on how to share power and then uh and the current and the country quickly descended into a bloody civil war. In 1994, a movement of Pashtun fundamentalist students, most of whom were trained in uh, madrasas, religious schools, uh, in refugee camps in Pakistan, seized Kandahar and started a campaign to wrest the country from the hands of the warlords. Known as the Taliban, this force marched into the Kabul in 1996 and took control of most of the rest of the country by 1998. And I guess that's when we start to see the um, what? the Taliban that we have so, come to know now. Mr. Osama bin Laden was a not he he was a he was the guy who found the money for these guys. Yes, of being so, who, who his parents were, no no doubt. Yeah, so he was good at finding money. Um, so yeah, th this is when Osama bin Laden, bin Laden stops becoming a a back room kind of guy and starts becoming like the leader an actual a, leader, a leader yeah, yeah. And act it's like hold on a minute yeah these guys are the faces of what's going on but this is a dude that actually gets shit done mm. so yeah okay many mujahideen warlords were forced to flee to the north where they joined the united islamic front for the salvation of afghanistan and or northern afghanistan led by burahadin Bur <laughs> Sorry, Burhanuddin Rabini or Rabani and Ahmed Shah Massoud. Even though Rabani had Massoud's Jamet, uh, I'll start. Jamet um, Islami. Oh uh, yeah. Even though Rabani and Massoud Jamet Islami was one of the main Mujahideen factions responsible for the defeat of the Soviet army during the 1980s, Moscow decided to lend its support to the Northern Alliance, as did Iran, India, and others. Now, now you can see why the Middle East is the state that it's in at the moment. It, the, it's just, obviously, just everyone wanted to just get involved. like Because they knew things. how much of a mess that area was. And they knew how much fucking oil was there. But right, Afgan exactly. Afghanistan has, doesn't have a lot of oil, apparently. Apparently, um, not in but it's, oil, it's, it's, it, 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 <laughs> the The main reason is where it is. It's it connects the middle east to well it, it's the country that borders russia obviously so it's the Soviet right. link there yeah, so it's that's why it's like we we have to have control of this because you know otherwise if Russia's they get got, control yeah, of it exactly. the communists uh, yeah yeah okay russia well, did i did find to... out earlier dean uh, that yep. they do have a a lot of lithium and a lot of nickel oh yes which is used yes. to make batteries yeah just think about that uh, Russia did not want to see a fundamentalist state emerge in Afghanistan. More importantly, the Taliban and their Al-Qaeda allies were providing training and sanctuary to Chechnyan rebels, Central Asian militants, and others whom Moscow deemed as a, as a threat. In spite of this interfere, um, inter, oh, what? Intercian warfare? Is that the correct word? <laughs> I don't believe I'm reading that correctly. I think I'm getting that wrong. In spite of this, however, ISI and the CIA uh, formulated a plan yeah. to topple the Najibullah government in a winter offensive on Kabul. As part of this offensive, the CIA paid Massoud $500,000 over and above his monthly stipend of $200,000 to close the Salang Highway, which Massoud failed to do. With that much money, I could close that highway. If yeah. someone's paying me that much, you get that job done. <clears throat> there, there no is wonder no the Taliban highway. offed you. Yeah, there, there is no highway left in my in my operation. Um, uh, during this period, the US became increasingly concerned with the relationship between Pakistan and the Taliban. The support of the Taliban had escalated tensions between the US and Pakistan. It was concerning for the US as the Taliban grew to be more extreme and direct and a direct threat to the United States its citizens and its foreign dignitaries, essentially by just leaving Afghanistan without resettling the refugees and leaving them in camps. They gave birth to the suicide bombers that committed countless terrorist attacks. And it's it's loads like yeah. they like there's US embassy bombings. There's like Pakistan's had so many suicide bombings like recently as well. It's 
you know, you radicalise people. some just even go undocumented because it's yeah. so frequent. Yeah, it's like school shootings in America. <laughs> it is. It, 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 they're, it over, they're every day. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, I think uh, you, you disenfranchise people and, you know, you give them an enemy by going, well, why are we here? Well, America tried, were meant to save us, but, you know, they just left just, us. You've just started a melting pot, basically. Now, the reason we talk about all of this is that one of the main men in the CIA funded Mujahideen forces uh, was the creator of what is essentially the LinkedIn of terrorists. Which I've said, yeah. You did, you, you did your gag already. already so. I, I left this bit away. I gave this bit away. <laughs> Osama bin Mohammed bin, Awad Awad bin Laden. Bin Laden. Oh, yes. Excuse me? What a name. Osama bin Mohammed bin Awad bin Laden. It's Which like, is basically what? all their fathers before them. Yeah. <laughs> no, that actually They've is. They've been true. leading, baby. <laughs> that is true. He's used to go to school with a guy called Nick Mohammed Faris Fatif Mohammed uh, Faris, which is Malaysian, basically the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, Osama bin Mohammed bin Awad bin Laden. I'll tell you what, I'll call him Awad. Uh, Awad bin Laden was Saudi. He was a Saudi. I'd Arabian... call him Osama bin Laden, like most people do. All <laughs> oh, right. How was I supposed to know? <laughs> the main I only man left himself... his full name in it because it was funny. Uh, the full ma uh, the main man himself was a Saudi Arabian citizen until 1994 and a member of the wealthy Bin Laden family. Bin Laden's father was Mohammed bin Awad bin Laden, a Saudi millionaire from, excuse me? He was from Yemen. Yemen. <laughs> yeah, from I'm Yemen. not going to pronounce it. Yeah. He was from Yemen and the founder of the construction company, Saudi Bin Laden Group. His mother, Alia Ghanim. There you go. Decent, good girl having a decent name. Do you know what I mean? She was, from sec uh, she was secular as well. Se really? Yeah, Ooh. secular middle class a, family. A secular middle class family in Latakia in Syria. He was born in Saudi Arabia and studied at university in the country until 1979 when he joined Mujahideen forces in Pakistan fighting against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. He helped to fund the Mujahideen by funneling arms, money and fighters from the Arab world into Afghanistan and gave, gained popularity amongst many Arabs. Because it showed uh, me the money. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like biggest dick swinging contest and he won, clearly. Got loads um, of money, mate. In 1980... It kind of sounds like Jake Paul's house. All those fucking <laughs> dickheads who hang around with him and it's just like, yeah. why do you hang around with that guy? He's like, oh, he's a really nice guy. Money bags. You sure? It's nothing to do with He makes money. you dress as a robot. Your job is be the robot, <laughs> man. <laughs> you are the robot, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, do you reckon that Osama bin Laden had like a robot man that just stood behind him? Yeah, he probably bought like a, hype a robot man. from Rocky Six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the worst yeah, robot. So I like robot. I want Rocky robot. Give me the Rocky robot now. They probably can't find it, and it's stuck in some cave, just sitting again. What is my function? <laughs> <laughs> what is my purpose? Yeah. Just no one answering him. Uh, oh, that's anyway. made me feel really sad. <laughs> robot. <laughs> Wait till Elon Musk. What is my comes. purpose? What, what is, is my purpose? purpose? Anyone? Oh. It is Awful. getting darker. Uh, <laughs> in, 19... <laughs> in 1988, he formed Al Qaeda. He was ban he was banished from Saudi Arabia in 1992 and shifted his base to Sudan until U.S. pressure forced him to leave Sudan in 1996. After establishing a new base in Afghanistan, he declared war against the United States, initiating a series of bombings and related attacks. It feels like he's just turned bit like he's turned up there and he's like, uh, I'm Osama. And everyone's like, well, I've not heard of you, mate. Don't know who you are or whatever. And then just immediately he's like, uh, death to America. And then everyone's like, well, fuck oh, um, yeah, all right. He would say that to anyone that would listen. Like there's right. so many like news articles and stuff and like press clippings like Osama bin Laden declares war on America, United States war. Like he, he was, and like, I hate to kind of say it, but rightly so, really, because the American government and not the American people, this, not school, this is not Americans. This is the American government threw its weight around like it always does, trying to police the world like yep. it's the fucking like, like team of fucking America is so spot on. It now and, makes you wonder, like, and you're like, of course, he fucking hates America. It destroyed like everything. They destroyed everything and then just fucking up and leave like they do every yeah. time. 
like they funded, they funded a, a massive war. They then tried to create a government of free people that did not like each other. They then caused a handful more civil wars mm. in a country that's just like, where does it go? Like, what does it do? It's all insane. because of that, all, all because of just outside interference and a shit ton of money. Yeah. And it is all, it all comes back to money. It all comes back to oil and money. There's not really any other reason for them to be there. You know, like what was their beef for the Soviets? Power just because, and money. Uh, yeah, it was like, well, that, and, and I kind of think as well, I guess all of like the staff at the, like the Oval Office and stuff were like, well, hold on a minute. Look what they did to us in the sixties. I think it's our turn to go and do this. Do you know what I mean? Like it's exactly. blatantly, blatantly. It's so, so yeah, and then you know, Bin Laden was then just bombing the fuck out of U.S. embassies, and he was he was building his network of of like minded people that were like, we agree with you, let's fuck America up, death to yeah. the West. Like, and these yeah. all, again, these all go back to the people that have read the readings of Kutub and like his followers and those people. Like, there was a massive section in there that I deleted out of the script because it's like it just goes on so much, and I was like, actually, it's yeah, really deep. deep. It's so deep, but like that, like these, these, all these warlords in Afghanistan were all sort of people that had read Kutub or they'd been involved yeah. with people that had followed Kutub and started other factions and Islamic states and, you know, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood and things like that were all people that then went on to, you know, generate, create these, not terrorists, they were, they were people, people who believed in something and they just so happened to believe in it so much that they could be radicalized even further yeah then go on to like bomb us embassies you know and start this like you know fighting back and just going fuck you guys like yeah like, of you. and proxy wars yeah yeah crazy yeah, okay so he, was, he was chucked on the most wanted list then wasn't he after all yeah. that in uh, most wanted list and that was what year was that in 19... 1998 1998 it's very important that we remember when he was the prime like on the top 10 FBI list, 1998. Yeah. Okay. So Oof. the next thing that happened, well, in our story is the bombing of the World Trade Center. And not in 1993, the, correct? Yeah, not the, not the, not the, not the, not the big one, not the famous one. This not, is the yeah. little brother, the lesser known bombing of the World Trade Center, which was, uh, on February the 26th, 1993, at exactly 12.31 in the afternoon, a truck carrying a bomb weighing 1,336 pounds. I don't know what that is in kilos, but that is over a ton of Uriah, over a ton of Uriah nitrate hydrogen was detonated underneath the World Trade Center in the public parking lot. The attack was plotted by a group of terrorists, Ramzi Youssef, Mohammed Abu Halama, Mohammed Sal Salma. Salama, Nidal yeah. Ayred, Abdul Rahman Yassin, and Ahmed Aja, along with the blind sheikh, I think this guy is, the cu Khalid uh, Sheikh Mohammed. I Used believe uncle, so, but his name's important, Khalid mm -hmm. Sheikh Mohammed. Very important. Yeah, he's like, and he's he was Yusuf's uncle. Uh, he was responsible for funding the attack, and the bomb opened up. Right, so this bomb was so big, it opened a 100 foot, 100 foot wide hole through four sub levels of concrete. <laughs> That is a serious amount it's of insane. power in a in a van. Yeah, so it that's was, crazy. It was so the plan was I don't know if we've got that in here, but the, I, I I'm the plan not too was, sure. Yeah, yeah, the plan was for the north tower to fall into the south tower. Oh, well, that were creating a domino effect. So yeah, they wanted but, like a... which would have done a fuckload more damage than the the, the actual twin towers, the, 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 the current one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So initially, initially, uh, like the seven seven bombings, the news reports were that it was a transformer explosion. Un unfortunately, uh, unlike unlike the seven seven bombings, which probably was a transformer explosion yeah. that yeah. was then retconned to be a terrorist attack. This was a terrorist attack that was thought to be a transformer thing. That's and you need if you haven't listened to that episode, people of listening now or watching now. Go back and listen to our seven seven bombings episode straight after this one because that's one of my favorite episodes we've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that my mind too, and a lot yeah. because we all we get a lot of people saying uh, 
like I never read well um didn't Andy Baz one of our close mates uh, shout out to Andy Baz didn't he yeah. mention he, he was unaware of 77 seven before he we didn't brought realize it, it was a conspiracy yeah and a lot of people don't no. a lot I think um Callum and Scott from Cryptid Ramblers were in uh, the studio the other day and we were talking about this and they were talking about how seven set the seven seven r seven seven bombings episode was like an eye, big eye opener to them because they didn't think there was a there was wow. any um conspiracy there i'm there's kind of there's more a conspiracy and we're going to get into this there's more conspiracy around the seven seven bombings than mm. there is the nine eleven bombings in my opinion yeah because that that goes that's gets really messy with like informants and who the mi5 mm. know and used and mm. spoke to oh yeah that's a very very crazy crazy one yeah so yusuf also wanted the smoke to remain in the tower smothering people inside killing them slowly wow uh, yeah the attack was uh, <laughs> what the the attack wasn't an asset wasn't a suicide attempt though it was a 20 foot fuse was lit by yusuf according to the transcript of his trial yusuf hopped hoped that the explosion would topple tower one and fall into tower two killing the occupants of both towers which would estimate about two hundred fifty thousand people revenge for the u.s support israeli against israel against palestine so that's like goes all the yeah like more yeah. messed up middle east stuff so there's um i think we've got the we're gonna have to remove some of this stuff because it goes on too much mm. um in fact i probably will but the fbi were heavily involved uh uh and i think we'll just do that bit but yeah one of the main things that i wanted to that one of the greatest stories that came out of this was the and i kind of relate to this guy in this one the only, the only <laughs> i know I what's going to, <laughs> he went back <laughs> to collect the deposit on the van that they put the bomb in saying it had been stolen and that fbi just arrested him there and then straight away <laughs> they waited for him like he might come back you know what he might go oh. back from the deposit no he's not gonna go back from the deposit <laughs> he might that's go back like, from the deposit it's literally guys he's gone back for the deposit <laughs> it's a bit sick <laughs> Four, now, now, so anyone listening or watching that has has heard us obviously mention Four Lions. Four Lions is a movie that was um, about four would be Why terrorists. You four lions? I'm going for a in, okay, mate. Four would be terrorists that are, or five. I, I think it's either four or five that are planning on it's suicide four bombing. Lions, four lions. So, oh, of course, yeah, four. I'm a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I've only just I've only just got that myself. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, uh, four terror British terrorists that want to blow themselves up at the um, London Marathon or something like that. And they're just idiots. And they sound like the sort of characters that would try to get the deposit back on the van that they blow up or something like that. Like they go on about one character buying too many bottles of bleach and his idea is dressing up as a woman with a beard. <laughs> And he doesn't even dress up as a woman. He just puts he his hand to, over his face. He puts his hand over his face to cover his beard while he pretends to sound like a woman asking three for... Three bottles of bleach, please. Three bottles of bleach, <laughs> But I, I, I don't um, want to spoil it. It's a phenomenal movie. If, if anybody hasn't seen it and they're listening to this podcast, please take the time out to watch Four Lions. It's oh, absolutely superb. It. It's superb, and it's what? a very, it's a very like. It's well, me, you, and uh, Will went and see it together, yeah. didn't we, Ben? It was me, you, Lee, and Will. And um, some people say it's insensitive, but some people like us are just like, no, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's so because good. Because you could say there's so many films about white people fucking it up, like, and obviously the people who were involved in writing it know what the fuck they're talking about like it's not like i know chris morris is not gonna go and write chris morris is definitely not gonna write something racist it's not racist. right exactly it's just incompetence it's right about how in any situation however severe there are gonna be you know people who are too stupid to understand what they're doing or like too blinded by faith which is right yeah yeah which and is, and what's it's, about, it's about blind faith is that film is what it's about it's not about yeah, race or but it also religion. it's also yeah it also it's like in saying in saying that like morris isn't gonna write something just racist because you're you're kind of it, it makes you flip and flop between them because you kind of like the characters 
but then it, it allows you to sit there and feel an emotion for them like for the fact of that you're, you're like you're hoping that they they realize what they're doing you know i won't spoil it but you kind of hope that you, you you're rooting for them to not be who they want to be and it's a very very interesting perspective on feelings towards people that are set to be suicide bombers you know exactly it's, it's a very interesting perspective because not everyone is bad that follows these particular types of religion that might seem extremist they're just led down a wrong path you know yeah. and uh i think anyone could be led down that path anyone yeah. it, it, if you you can radicalize anyone look at america now like i shared you that that meme the other day of people really need to pee yeah Sorry, well, this is pee time um of people are it's the same thing when you're whether you're praying to or you're like celebrating the quran or the American flag or a football team it's you're radicalized to that thing and I think it's just if someone can get you at that with that passion and can control your passion and push you into that direction and to kind of snowball that passion until it becomes something that you are so passionate about you die for you know it's it's, it's very easy I think it's very easy to radicalize someone and and turn them into a fundamentalist suicide bomber. I think it really is. Yeah. I think you could turn someone into a suicide bomber for a football team. I think you could. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, these, these guys go to prison for X amount of time, don't they, for like fighting for a football team, but they're not, it's almost like so historic now that they don't even go watch the football anymore. They just go for the fight. But they're yeah. part of that. It's, that. it's that team building thing, that's a mob mentality, isn't it, that people just really enjoy people want to be part of something mm. and although there is probably many that know what they're talking about there'll be thousands that don't they just they just believe their elders don't they yeah exactly i'm just um looking i'm seeing if i can cut anything out of this script but i think basically the fbi the fbi were heavily involved uh with people involved in that 1993 plot they were heavily involved in it so much so that they could pick they picked out the whole when it became to making arrests they were able to pick out exactly who was involved in it like because that yeah him because... him him so that for me leads to the fact that they probably could have stopped it and it may yeah and it also leads leads you to believe did everybody know even about 9 11 you know and um well wow. remember talk uh, well yeah i know i know we're probably going to get to that but it's what i was kind of getting at when i was talking about maturing through the years of a conspiracy theory and looking beyond the veil of it from from a po political standpoint rather than oh they put bombs because they wanted to do this like they wanted to do an operation northwards you know yeah. it's interesting it's scary how far it goes back and how many people are involved yeah and even that attack there was people trying to get the claim that Iraqis were involved in it. It was Saddam's plan. You know, right. even then they were like, you know, it, it's, it's the Iraqis. They want to do it. Um, you know, is it, but you know, I still it's the same like, story I'm... that happened after nine 11 as well. Like, you know, they, they've got, they've got their boogeyman and they want to get him in, but there was never anything to put him there. Yeah. And it always made me wonder as well, like when nine 11 occurred, how it wasn't, it wasn't common speak for people to sit there and be like, so what does Saddam have to do with this? Because I just remember that the, the war starting in Afghanistan and stuff like that. Mm. And then out of nowhere, they're just like, Saddam was saying it's bad. Yeah. Like, and it's just like, what? Where, where did, okay, where well, did Rum, he come from? Like, so Rumsfeld, <laughs> Rumsfeld and Cheney obviously had like past um, history with him during their time with, George Bush senior, right? It's obviously Desert Storm and that, and Rumsfeld and Cheney were involved in that. And yes, they, I think they they knew how much oil was there. Is what that's that's basically it. And they were like, yeah, literally it. We yeah. we could go back in there and we can get that if we just find a reason. And they needed yeah. the smoking gun, and they thought they could get it in ninety three, and they didn't. No, and they didn't get it. So. That leads us on to, and I'm skipping a big bit of 
stuff here, but I think I think we know we've just gone over it a lot. Yeah. Um, I think that leads us up to September 11th and whether they knew about it or not. It, yeah. You know, could it have been the smoking gun that they were looking for? Yeah. It's interesting. It yes. <laughs> and, it, and it's very interesting. You saying that um, it wasn't um, they didn't get the response, I guess, that they were hoping for to go to the Middle East uh for oil or a new war in 1993 and it often makes me wonder um whether it was a technological like problem in the sense of the communication and worldwide shock about it like, I, I think I it was like, the death toll i think it was the i think because it because like, it was so minuscule because there was only six people i believe killed it in the do you know what it is? And it, I think I know we're going to get we're going to get onto the actual 9-11 in a minute. But I think what it was is that that there was no branding to it. There was no visible. There was nothing visible like the skyline hadn't changed. There wasn't these hours of footage, you know, of like there wasn't. It was. Yeah, it was a shock attack where there was no nothing to kind of. Oh, look, here's the injury. Oh, look at it. Look what happened. Yeah, look what happened, and it's... Look what they did to you, America. Look what yeah. they did. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, and then, you know, and, you know, the, I think what they learned from that is that branding was definitely a big thing in this 9-11, because you got 9-11. We call it 9-11. It's 11-9 in this country. It, it, if you want to get technical, it is. It's 11-9. <laughs> and it's, it's September 11 the 11th. So a lot of I know if you if you listen to the conspiracy ones, which I haven't done this time, I didn't listen to a lot of the conspiracy documentaries and videos. I, I'm going to watch a few tomorrow. I didn't even touch Loose Change. I didn't, I didn't even touch. I couldn't find it. Oh, I've had I've had uh, I think it's the final one on yeah. on on a hard drive for yeah. God knows how long. I, I was like quite lucky to find it, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. So I I. Uh... Yeah, I didn't touch it. I didn't touch on hardly any of the conspiracy ones. But the ones I, the ones I've watched in the past, none of them say nine eleven. They always say the attacks of September the September eleventh, two thousand and one. Yes, yeah. They they always they never say nine eleven because they they I think they're convinced that that's a brand name and it is a brand well, it's, name. It is it's because say funny. Nine. Yeah, it's Sorry. funny you mention it though because being when I was back home, I always referred to it as September eleventh. Yeah, like when I when I used to lifeguard and I talked to a lot of the younger like lifeguards because obviously come and talk to me about September the 11th, kids. I've got to open tell, your eyes. <laughs> let me tell you the world. Changed, get out of that man. pool. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> get I've got something to tell you about September the 11th, 2001. Yeah. It was a nice day. It was a climate <laughs> very you know, very jet very fuel reasonable don't day. Don't melt steel beams. <laughs> Put a jet fuel. Don't melt steel beams. And get yes, off but the lane Office road. fires do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's since coming and um, living in the United States, I brand it. I call it nine eleven, and and I don't and, and it, I don't know, I don't know whether I've not noticed that or I've just accustomed myself to the way they pronounce it. But back home, it was always September eleventh. It was never nine eleven because mm. it's not a symbol to us, is it? No, it's quite a, quite a uh, interesting piece of psychological. And we'll get onto the symbol Six. of the eleven at some point in the conspiracy episode. Oh, oh no! Which JJ's, <laughs> JJ's going to love. Yeah, JJ can't wait for that one. I bet. Do you know about the elevens, the three elevens? Yeah. The most evil evil number. I've got it tattooed on my finger somewhere. What three eleven? Oh, you no way. Yeah. Yeah. No. What for that purpose? I've got not, two 11s. Not because of 9-11, though. You didn't get it ah. because of that, did you? you got no, it because it's two, the... I got two 11s. Because of 9-11? Oh, two 11s. No, ah. I've just got two 11s. So, <laughs> not because of 9-11. You know because of if I was going to get a tattoo for 9-11, I'd, I'd have got 9-11, not two 11s. <laughs> two 11s. <laughs> We're talking about two 11s. We're talking about, about it, second, like, the second of November. Think, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I think oh, yeah, because it's September, isn't it? Shit. Hey, hey, I think you're correct though, uh, Ben. That this is obviously more significant because the world knew about it immediately. And if it had, if if the plan had gone the way they wanted it to, would it have become um, a significant attack? 
because because the sound of one tower collapsing into that and then chaos ensuing that sounds pretty well i don't think you'd need i don't think you'd need to um this the september 11th would have happened because they would have done their job and the war would still probably be going on forever war would have started six years earlier yeah i mean this guy should have been training him not to do star jumps. He should have just played a game of Jenga with them because they obviously <laughs> are so incompetent. Like you just blow up one corner and it tips it over. Don't yeah. put it in the middle. Like oh, the floor underneath. It. Yeah. You need to go yeah, up. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's like taking the middle cube out of the bottom of a game of Jenga. It's not going to fall over. Like yeah. take the corner <laughs> cube, the cube out as well. Stop getting these guys to star jump. I think I've got confused on the analogy. star jumping thing, but. Because that was the Afghan army, wasn't it? Not the same guys. Well, they, but, I mean, yeah, yeah, the same kind of guy. My signal is so bad here. I'm just getting bits and bats of everything. So it's fine. <laughs> um, I'll just okay. create my new story after this. So, <laughs> the day of September 11th. And I think we're going to go... I've there's some. I'm going to put some humbling facts I've put in this. Yep. Okay. But, um, I think unless something comes, crops up, let's... Let's not jump to too many conclusions and conspiracies. Let's honor the, because I think we've got to remember that 3,000 people died at this, mm. including firefighters, first responders. You know, only 15 hijackers died or 19 hijackers died on the day. Mm. Um, so it is like, as much as like, I love laughing and joking, I, I feel like it would be bad for us to take the piss too much. But at the same time, I know where people tune in. For nonce jokes and laughing at dead people. So, <laughs> Jesus. so statistically, already. there was probably one of the, there was probably a nonce in the 3,000 oh, people. Oh, there was plenty there of, there JJ was a saved fuck, it. Fucked out of nonce. Probably killed. Do you so know we what? can laugh about Actually, him now and then. What's this? Wait, one second. Right. I've got to do some Googling. Dean, do you want to start reading that so I can, why I Google this and I'm not going to tell you what I'm Googling? Of course, of course. I know what you're googling. I hundred percent know what you're googling. <laughs> so Statistic, statistically, how many nonces are in a group, of, and then you're gonna yes! you're gonna work out. Yes! How... <laughs> That's superb. Statistically, out of how, one in how many people are pedophiles? <laughs> Can't wait to see your Google search history. Okay, it's just, um, just that. <laughs> right, are we ready? Yeah. September eleventh. 2001, a clear, sunny, late summer day. Al-Qaeda terrorists aboard free hijacked uh, passenger. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make that sound really, like, kind of sentimental, you know? I was trying with that one. But what, what was that, sorry? Them. 150 of the people died on 9-11 with pedophiles. <laughs> That's superb content. The dedication, I love it. The so there is some. To the there, there is some. Well, justice. We don't know which one. We didn't know which ones were. They were. So we can't. We can't blank yeah. it. Proven like until this. yeah, until so. pro- uh, innocent until proven guilty. But statistics yeah. don't lie. Anyway, September eleventh, two thousand one. The clear, sunny, late summer day. Al Qaeda terrorists aboard three hijacked passenger planes carried out a coordinated suicide attacks against the World Trade Center in New York City. Uh, the pen and the Pentagon in Washington DC, killing everyone on board the planes and nearly three thousand people on the ground. So, on average, on, let's put this in perspective. On average, two hundred fifty thousand people enter the World Trade Centers every day. So that's twelve thousand five hundred pedophiles enter. <laughs> the- <laughs> and only one hundred fifty of them died. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> this this went west. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's my last that's my last statistic on pedophiles at oh, World Trade Center. But oh there's a lot of them going in there every day. <laughs> Apparently, um, the percentage of British uh, pedophiles may be higher. I hope you're using a VPN. So they should have done it over here, really. <laughs> no, because I'm I'm only looking at the Guardian. I hope you're using a VPN. I'm not actually. I should have used a VPN, but sometimes yeah. it messes with my Zoom calls. Oh God, you're I'm on the five what... list, mate. Easy, easy. No, I'm only putting like I'm. I'm literally. I've. I found oh. out that it's five percent, and then I'm just using the calculator. I'm not looking. Oh at... for God, that was. Uh, that was so so yeah, 
A fourth plane crashed into a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, killing all on board after passengers and crews attempted to gain control from the hijackers. This plane, this was the plane that actually took off 40 minutes later. So people were able to get messages to that plane. So when they right. found out, the, like someone the text, oh, the, the plane's crashed into uh, the yeah. world. Are you Center. okay? Two Are planes okay? have crashed. Our plane's been hijacked. Okay, we know what they're going to do now. We'll crash it. Because they were all the people on the planes were told that there's a bomb. They're just they're gonna everyone's gonna land. They were all told mm. they were gonna land and like it was yeah. just for ransom money. So they didn't get so everyone thought like stay calm, we're gonna get out. Yeah, of oh so okay, yeah. Let's they were gonna let them do their thing. But yeah. but what's more um horrifying as well is the a lot of the documentaries that we've we've been uh researching through and stuff like that, playing like the audio tapes. Uh, that the black box managed to pick up um, and the uh, the radio uh, receiver that was projecting audio from the plane indirectly to like the yeah, by uh, um, yeah by accident to the um, boom. Boom. satellite towers yeah like the radio control and whatnot and you could hear like the passengers trying to break into the cockpit mm. And like, I, I guess at the same time that this, the pilot, I'm not too sure which one, it, uh, wh who his name was, plummeted it into the yeah. ground. Sorry, they spoiler had, alert, they, if you're not. They also had um, less hijackers. This is the one that had the least amount of hijackers. So they yeah. were like, yeah, they didn't obviously have enough manpower. Um, okay, but yeah, yeah, but th that was planned. They were planned to land that, or put that one into the Capitol building. Yes. Which would have been, uh, all, that would have been it. That I think that would have been like, that would have been insane. Immediate, the of people immediate all out war. <laughs> yeah. If they'd done it. Like if, it wasn't if, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if they'd done it, if they'd all been, if it all happened time synced, because it all did except for that plane. Uh, that, that plane being late. Yeah. Taking 40 off minutes late. Delayed. Then the, the death toll would have been like so much higher. Catastrophic. Got, yeah. Yeah. The amount of people in the Capitol building at 9, 9 a.m. Like. <laughs> Absurd. Yeah. Absurd number. Uh, yeah. Okay, all flights were headed west. The hijackers picked flights with full tanks of fuel. Uh, okay, we're doing going to calculated. be doing a yeah, cal yeah, yeah, very calculated when you think about very, it. Very that never. Calculated. That's not actually like I didn't think about that. I think because they they it was taken off from the east all the way across to the west. So, You're gonna have a shit ton of fuel, like yeah. wow. And you flew, and they flew twenty minutes, so it didn't even. Like, it barely touched. It was still it on full, mate. It went. It yeah. didn't notch yeah. down even a bit. That was no. Yeah. Okay, we're going to be doing a, a minute. Well, I say minute by minute, but like the mm. events unfolded so quickly. A very accurate timeline. Yeah, time stamped. Yeah, timeline. Yeah. So, seven fifty nine a.m. American Airlines Flight Eleven, a Boeing seven six seven with ninety two people A one one. Remember that, people, for next episode. A A one one. It's very important for the potential magic ritual that was taking place on this day and there was 92 <laughs> people on board the boeing 767 uh, and it took off from boston's logan international airport en route to los angeles so as we was just saying it was going from east to west full tank of fuel yeah, 8 and... 14 a.m united yeah. airlines flight 175 a boeing 767 libra 175 alistair crowley <laughs> one seven five is is another big number. One of Alistair Crowley's most important numbers. He said. So. Okay. Yeah. Flight one seven five. Seven six seven. <laughs> with with sixty five people aboard, it takes off again from Boston. Uh, it is also headed to Los what? Angeles. So it's it's really strange for me because I've never been on a flight that isn't full, or at least nearly full. I've well American I've, flights. Uh, I've been domestic, on a few that domestic have... flights. Yeah, like. I've, Especially if playing that what, big. What I did well, what I did with the auto shows, there were some times I was on a Boeing seven, whatever seven, seven four seven or something like that, and there would only be thirty people on board. Yeah, yeah. Domestic, connected from Philly to LA was yeah about twelve people. It's mm. uh, it, it isn't uncommon because I remember when we was researching this as well. A lot of people saying like, oddly, there wasn't many people on board these planes. And it's like, well, from my history of traveling domestically across the states while living here, that's not, it's that's that for someone to even bring that up as a conspiracy shows that they yeah. they haven't flown domestically. Yeah. Um, in the United States. Uh, well, that's eight, good. Nine, so I didn't know that. I didn't that that. Wasn't, yeah. That, yeah. So eight nineteen a.m. Flight attendants aboard uh, flight eleven alert ground personnel. 
that the plane has been hijacked. American Airlines notifies the FBI. That is yeah. mere. They're probably still climbing. Yeah, probably well, they, still they climbing. Never, I think they. That's what all. If you listen to the radio tower kind of thing, it's like, why keep climbing? Keep climbing. Why have you stopped climbing? Like, ah, oh, right, like, yes. But the call, like the call, the the flight eleven call has been recorded. It's on one of the. I think it's on Turning Point or um, inside the president's war room. Yeah, and they all she could get through to was the help desk. That, that, oh, so it, the, so it literally the help desk at the airport went on, on the phone, like you know, like you like back in the day before the internet when you had to talk to you someone. Ha- yeah, yeah. She got through <laughs> you to them, to and then they obviously them. noticed up by the FBI. She's like, "We've been hijacked," and then it yeah. cuts off abruptly as well. It's pretty. You know what happened? Yeah, someone obviously <laughs> cut the line. Yeah, or a so. 8.20 a.m. American Airlines Flight 77 takes off from Dulles International Airport outside of Washington, D.C. The Boeing 757 is headed to Los Angeles with 64 people on board. At 8.24, hijacker Mohammed Atta makes the first two accidental transmissions from Flight 11 to ground control, apparently in an attempt mm. to communicate with planes. Yeah, we have bomb. We, got, we have bomb. Stay calm. We're going to land, is what he says. And he, he doesn't land. No, yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> spoiler. spoiler. But even the way, like, hearing his communication on that uh, that documentary, um, what was it called? The uh, the one beginning with T, turning, turning point. point. Excuse me. Yeah, you listen to him on the production of the documentary is phenomenal, mm. and listening back to the audio piece from him, like that must have been horrifying to hear. Like yeah. that voice and tone just sitting there saying nobody move the plane is ours sit down do not do anything don't put the plane and yourself in danger yeah like i just listening to that back was horrible yeah i wish I'd, like, uh, there's another documentary i want to watch which i'll probably watch tomorrow before we do the second episode which is more sure. of a deep dive into conspiracies called 102 minutes which is a lot of found footage yes i found wish footage, i watched yes. that before this but I, I haven't but i will watch it tomorrow it's on the um, list for and so I think we probably should talk about the the pilots and how they and their training because that was a big that's a big thing that kind of happened that these guys have been in the US for about a year and they've been learning to fly planes but right I, I, in Florida the, yeah in Florida and all reports of um of their training was that they weren't very good I think Atar is the only one that had some skill in flying yeah yeah uh, um, and it's always a major thing with the conspiracy people is that um how did they how did they if this was terrorists that couldn't fly planes how did they fly it so well how did they get so much control over the flight but in my research i've discovered that on these planes you can the autopilot you can set it to a Co- a GPS coordinate and it will just take you there. That's why right. it always looks like military precision flying because the yes. plane was flying in that. It's a that. It was control. autopilot. Yeah, it yeah, was it's doing what it's programmed to do. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, yeah, but surely they're... there'd be elements. There'd be elements of that. The they must have because unless it was really that primitive, you the autopilot shouldn't just surely fly them straight i think they put it it they must have just pulled very it very close and then they pull it into the actual you would just or it, was like, would be... or it was like on flight simulator when it just turns off if you crash into anything yeah it doesn't let you see the explosions <laughs> oh really yeah uh, all the play that then. no one survived but as yeah, well crap, don't play it. have you got some more bits on uh the, it was just yeah i think overall the the, the flight training was uh not successful they weren't very yeah good and it, it. And it's widely reported, it's in a couple of documentaries as well, that the um, the instructors themselves, who were the teachers of these uh, Arab men, they were saying that like it's not like they had any interest even in listening. No. It's like they were asking about, um, what was it they, uh, they were asking about? Yeah, oh, he uh, said, don't was... worry, I don't need to know how to land. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. Like... <laughs> <laughs> one of them was asking about the security of um like one some government like location near them yeah. or something like that they were saying yeah, there's a lot of them asking about security at the airports and things like that and they and a couple of them lived in an apartment in florida and one of the neighbors was saying one of one of the neighbors had said that 
one of them was like a coke addict and yeah. was so, always in a strip club or something yeah, they like were, that. Yeah, they were always in strip clubs. They were always going to Vegas. They weren't, I don't think they were doing coke. I think there was a stripper that claimed that she was shagging one of the things. Ah, and okay. When it came out, is that she was like he was like some six four, six two guy, and none of the uh, <laughs> none of them were over six foot. And when and then she finally found a picture of him, it was it was just some Asian guy, it's some Middle no, Eastern guy. It was some it was Arabic the, dude, just some Arabic dude. It had nothing to. <laughs> well, obviously Amazing. for her, it's a story. Isn't it? Dan Gil. It's for, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, her, it's like how do I? How am I connected to this? How can I be connected to it? It's an emotional response that like humans want to feel like they're part of it, don't they? Ah, right. I feel right. like a lot of those were stories that are like, even though it is documented in those documentaries about them, the way that they acted in these flight schools. Yeah. It's like that guy's teaching people how to fly a plane, yeah, probably using like, a flight oh, simulator and also every he day. doesn't want to be the guy who trained them. Does he? He doesn't want to be the guy that went. Yeah, they were brilliant students. I trained them to the best of my capabilities, yeah, and uh, yeah. I created, ah. I created some monsters. He doesn't. Yeah. Want to I, be don't, I also wouldn't. I, I also wouldn't want to be the guy who let that guy go. Yeah, I'm not interested in landing the plane, mate. I just want to fly it around. <laughs> like, surely he must have gone. Thing is, mate, you do have to land the plane. Like that's part of flying in general. You can't, you can't just parachute out and let it glide down. I'd have, I, I wouldn't admit to that. I'd be like, yeah, the guy was just really cool. Yeah, cool, um, real cool guy. And yeah. am I right in? Uh, I'm pretty sure I got this where in in my research and stuff that it, nine days before the event is when all of the uh, the party of uh, hijackers were put on the FBI's wanted list. 19 or, days. 19 days, I apologize. But so obviously this is before the future, so it wouldn't have been as easy as it is now. If you get put them. on the thing, you're up. You were on that list. If you're on that list, it's instant, it's everywhere. Everyone's yeah. like, all the systems are updated to show it. Also, another thing that I want to say about the flight thing, but now I can't remember it because that question came up, so I'll wait. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm just going to put a pin in it because I know there's something I need to say about that. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, at 8.40 a.m., uh, air traffic controllers at the Federal Aviation Administration alert North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, uh, North, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, North Air, Northeast Air Defense Sector uh, about the needs. suspected hijacking needs. <laughs> Suspected the hijacking of Flight 11. In response, Needs scrambles two fighter planes located at Cape Cod's Otis Air National Guard Base to locate and tail Flight 11. They are not yet in the air when Flight 11 crashed into the Northern Tower. They were still on the runway. Uh, yeah, and Cape Cod's are fucking miles away. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the whole of England away from New York. Really? Eight forty-one a.m. United Airlines ninety-three, a Boeing seven four uh, oh, seven five not. seven with forty-four people aboard, takes off from Newark International Airport en route to San Francisco. It had been scheduled to depart at eight a.m. around the time of the other hijacked flights. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's no. the reason that one got grounded because they all found out about it and they were able to. They realized what was going to happen. They weren't going to get landed safely, and it wasn't a ransom thing they were going to get crashed into the capital yeah building. it so. was they were at lows at most likely yeah. all odds were going to die yeah. with, along so, with the hijackers i remembered what i was going to say and i'm going to say it now but it's definitely leads into it's one of the main points of the next episode is that on that plane on that flight course was an fbi an fbi undercover agent was on that flight course but he didn't know because they were under the these guys were under surveillance from the CIA. Oh, he didn't right, yeah. know that they were under surveillance, so he couldn't. He didn't even think like because the CIA and the FBI hate talk. sharing information. Yes, even to this day. Um, <sighs> so that so obviously that uh, and one of the main parts of tom or the next episode, if we don't get onto it today, because we're only an hour and a bit in, mm. so we might actually get to it because we're nearly through this. But the one of the main points is that. This was a completely avoidable situation. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. There was enough red flags to for these people yeah. to be well to not do what they did. Yeah. Okay. Uh 8 46 a.m. Muhammad Atta and the other hijackers are aboard 
American Airlines Flight 11 crashed the plane into the floors 93 to 99 of the North Tower of the World Trade Center, killing everyone on board and hundreds inside the building. Have you noticed that it, the way the planes go in is across, like diagonally, taking out a fuck ton of floors? Like, yeah. If they got in straight, I think it would have taken out two floors. They've or got something, in, yeah. Yeah, so at an, angle. at an angle, yeah. Which and is... you could see, yeah, the first one, like that's that's a shit ton of floors. Yeah, like that... using the wings as well. Yeah, it's like it's, uh, it's crazy. It's, it's it's really dark, but it's like yeah. and good it observation hit, if that's what you were going for. Five hundred miles an hour. It hit the world trade. That's why it goes through like butter. Like it goes through like a hot knife through butter, doesn't it? It just disappears. Yeah. It explodes. You see it come out the other side. Oh, well, on the, great. On, on yeah. the other one, you see the other, it come out the other side. And uh, the, the explosion, like it was a moving explosion, but the jet fuel went down the elevator shafts. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it burned like, I think, yeah, it, it, it burned 18 people, killing 11 and wounding seven. That's that one was just thing, the jet yeah. fuel. Yeah. That was one thing that um, was shocking in, in the, um, uh the the the, doc, the documentary i was watching the i'm beginning to teeth crying out loud turning point turning point excuse me yeah when the fireman said when they were talking to the first person the the guy whose unit had first responded and they said they got into the lobby and they said all they saw was dead people in the elevators mm. i remember sitting there and being like so what has happened there did that elevator just crash to the ground and then when he it ends up being explained that the jet fuel ended up just whooshing down the elevator shafts. That was just, could you, I, can't, I couldn't imagine the pain of just, just well, that's magma why, essentially that's, being that's poured That's why on people you. decided to jump out of the windows rather than being yeah. burnt alive, which is just, uh, I can't even a bit imagine bit having to make that decision. That's like, it's dark. Dark. Which way am I going to die? Not yeah. how am I going to save myself? Which way am I going to die? Free fall for 10 seconds or burn alive or choke. Yeah, or choke. I would have definitely it's... jumped. I, I would have jumped, I think. I think I would I would have gone, that's fucking hot. Out of go. Yeah, yeah insanity. It would have been a moment of madness with yeah. like reality just imploding in on you. Experience I mean, people, something. People jumping you... out with like no shirts on and everything just because yeah. they're like, and either Fuck. burnt off or, you know, yeah. they're used to cover their mouths or hanging on the outside yeah. of the window. For, I mean, when the first plane crashed, they were hanging on the outside of the windows for, yeah. like, a long time. Yeah, because the, the first tower was and that the second to fall. Cool. 102 yeah. minutes. No. They, they, it was 102 minutes, I think. Um, and it's, 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 it speaks volumes for me how I have realised how matured i have become toward <clears throat> this conspiracy and this event whereas in the past i would uh i practically glossed over a lot of the horror and a lot of the um the inhumane in the the humanity basically going on whereas i was like oh explosions oh this and all oh, that yeah. Now that I kind of I get older and I realize how finite life is, it's only then that you I watching back at these documentaries and witnessing people in the footage jumping out and then sitting there and thinking like not thinking, oh, there's bombs that they, they are oh, controlled demolition has caused these people to do this. It's I'm looking at it from such a human perspective and being like that guy had to choose to die and which way, way to do yeah. it and what would be the most painless. And I like, I, I sat there and just looked at my wife and I, I was just like, I, just thinking what those people yeah. could have, even a percentage have been thinking. Yeah. Like, Not the 5% it's... that are child molesters, obviously. <laughs> They're probably just thinking about little boys' assholes. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> This if you didn't laugh, discussing you'd cry. it, and, they just, and you... they've all got all of them. They've just got like the Nirvana Nevermind baby poster on their desk, but they've cut out just the section where <laughs> Dick and Balls are. I'm like, oh, it's my favorite album cover. <laughs> if if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Exactly. So... Exactly. 
Um, yeah, um, upon, upon the first plane strike in Tower 1, people in Tower 2 tried to evacuate, but were urged to stay at their desks by the announcement. Some tried to leave anyway, but were turned back by security. Even when the announcement was made to allow people to leave, bosses were urging people to stay. I totally understand this, why you would keep people in there, because this was an accident. Until the second plane hit, right. this was just an accident. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's that, and you know, you're not gonna like there's like 125,000 people in that building. You're not gonna want 250,000 people piling out into the streets, right? Exactly, exactly. It's it's when you think about it, it sounds like a very logical moment mm. or a logical thought, considering they they were oblivious as to what it was, and the fact that some people saw that and were just like, oh, that's a pretty big accident to occur. Yeah. Well, the, what like, George Bush was told, um, the, and the people that weren't, because obviously at this point, George Bush is in, and we'll get he's to in this, Florida. He's in Florida reading, um, get, he, he, talking about education, because obviously he led on education. His whole plan for America was to improve education. And yeah, it wasn't for, for his whole entire it term. Was, it was never about war. I don't think he ever mentioned war. Yeah. And, so he was there and what he was told is that someone's flown a plane into the North Tower. No one said it was a 747. They thought someone had flown a biplane in there. And so th at this point, everyone thinks it's an accident. That's why people have been told to stay at their desk because they're like, oh fuck, this is- Right, like, yeah. yeah. That, you know, and even you listen to the the recordings of the, there's a, I think it's some N NYU students recorded it after it happened and they're going, Oh my God, those people, I must like feeling so sorry for those people and like very like projecting empathy onto the people that's happened. Like, oh, he must have a heart attack. Like, how did this happen? Like, oh, what a tragic accident. Yes, I remember and hearing at that. At the yeah. moment, bang, the second plane goes in. They're like, oh my God, what's happening to us? Oh my God, we're under attack. Like the yeah. switch from that is insane. Like how the switch like, of reality. Yeah. It's going, oh, this is because I remember seeing this happen. So I, I on I remember seeing the the second plane go in. I was at, me too. Yes. I was at the co college in the media center, and someone's like, oh someone's something's hit the the World Trade Center, and they, it was on the telly and it was like oh like someone's going oh it's a fighter jet oh my god it's missile some people like talking oh it's just a plane accident like these things happen then like you see that second plane out of nowhere hit yeah. the plane like. Yeah, uh, same. What the actual fuck? Like, just it, watched. Yeah, just watched a real life action movie moment where people died on television at like at what o'clock in the morning? Nine yeah. or nine o'clock for us or something, wasn't it? No, it was. No, it, no, it was, it was no, it was, it was two in the afternoon or something. Yeah, yeah it, was it was in the afternoon just after lunch. <laughs> I had just, uh, I had just ran a district cross country race. Uh, I went back to school and I was allowed to go back home to have a shower because I was covered in mud. And I was like, what's that? It's like one half past one or something. I was like, I ain't going back to school. Sod that. And then I so I just sat in front of um sat in front of the uh, TV and then my dad rung up. Uh he rung the house phone and was like, Oh, you're home. I was like, Yeah, and he was like, Turn the TV, you're watching the TV. He went, the new die hard films out. <laughs> so I switched on Sky News and I was like, Oh, bloody hell. I was like, yeah, where's Bruce Willis in his dirty vest or whatever? We was both on the phone to each other. And then the plane hit. And I was on the phone to my dad at that moment. And obviously, he was at work and watching it on the TV at work in the, on the building site. And even on a building site, there wasn't like no laughter or anything. Everyone was just like, what the fuck? Like, dad was just like, don't go out, stay home, don't move. Oh, we're good, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I was... Yeah. Just like fixated. Just, I don't, as a, oh Christ, I can't even remember how old I was. I was in been. senior school. You, but you're, how old are you? You're a couple of years younger than me, aren't you? I'm 35, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, I've been yeah, I was at school year. as well. I just so, let, I, I, I was at college. So was I was either in year, year 10 or 11. You would have and, been year um, 11, I think. I remember, I remember, um, I remember how in school, is a random fact as well. Our PE teacher nearly got sacked because he was on a coming home from the district sports. He had a load of students in his coach. He made the coach driver pull over, 
and listened to the radio. And he said over the tunnel, he was like, I hate to break it to your kids, but World War Three's just started. <laughs> and loads of kids started going like, ah! Brilliant. <laughs> Um, so funny. But I remember like going into school and barely anybody making a joke about it, like or, or nothing. Everyone was just talking about like what it could be mm. and how everyone was like, "Is this going to be our world war?" Like then everyone was starting to like get scared about the fact that it could be like a the way we were learning about world war, like that shit happening now. Yeah, and it was scary, dude. Yeah, it was. It was a. It, there was one person that made jokes, but he was a cunt. So, fuck that guy. Um, yeah, it was insane. Um, so, obviously, we talked okay, about. Okay, yeah. Move, moving on with uh, the, the timeline now. Uh, so eight forty-seven. We're at, at eight forty-seven uh, a.m. now. Within seconds, New York Police Department and uh, New York Fire Department forces dispatch units to the World Trade Center, while Port Authority Police Department officers on site begin immediate evacuation of the North Tower. 8.50 a.m. White House Chief of Staff Andrew Card alerts President George W. Bush that a plane has hit the World Trade Center. The president were, uh, is visiting an elementary school in Sarasota, uh, no, Sarasota, Florida at the time. 9.02 a.m. After initially instructing tenants of the World Trade Center South Tower to remain in the building, Port Authority officials broadcast orders to evacuate both towers via the public address system. An estimated 10,000 to 14,000 people are already in the process of evacuating. Then at 9.03 a.m., hijackers crash United Airlines Flight 175 into floors 75 and 85 of the World Trade Center's South Tower, killing everybody on board and hundreds inside the building. During the destruction, a guide named uh, a guide dog named Roselle, led by her blind owner down uh, 78 flights of stairs and to the home of a friend. Bloody hell, what? That was a statistic thrown in the it's middle of the light, timeline. A bit, bit light-hearted statistics there, just to kind of, bit, you know, it's, it's getting a bit dark. Dogs, dogs are still awesome, even in situations like that. So, yeah. okay, as long as there's um, someone else's dog. Yes, Fuck not a nonsense pets. dog. Yeah. 9.08 a.m., the FAA bans all takeoffs uh, of flights going to New York City or through the airspace around the city. 9.21 a.m., the Port Authority closes all bridges and tunnels in New York City area. Uh, 9.24 a.m., the FAA notified needs of the suspected hijacking of Flight 77 after some passengers and crew aboard are able to alert family members on the ground. It sounds like a complete mess of communication on this day. It was. It was. It was a complete mess because, obviously, during all this, Dick Cheney has authorized a fuck ton of war games and uh, uh, test flights and all these kind of things that he was in. He 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 lobbied the president for to be in charge of to be in charge specifically of um, war games. Uh, uh, like the test runs and all that. He he run that from a war room uh, in Building 7. In Building 7. Oh, funny, funny that. The person that's known about all of this with the CIA and uh, all of these Middle Eastern uh, fundamentalist groups and yeah. the fact that he's known about it through different uh, terms of different presidents. And on this day, he decides to take control of something that is supposed to protect the yeah. country and you know how how people go on about how uh how could it be a conspiracy there have to be so many people involved with it to to like to make it happen and who would, how many could that many people keep a secret about it doesn't it, it's just it one doesn't person work like that what, it could be just be one person at the top yeah. controlling yeah. Playing chess with all these Pulling, things, yep. because he's right every at the top. String. He's in complete control over what's happening and all these things. He's he's got he was and it's it's been said he's the vice president with the most power of any vice president before or after him. He is he yep. was basically the only the one. Yep. He was he had he he because he took the job reluctantly. He reluctantly took the job like he, he yeah. claimed that oh i'll find you the best person for the job i don't want to do it i don't want to do it he made out that he didn't want the job and he went oh, i can't find anyone suitable enough i'll do it for you so, don't worry yeah i'll i'll do it i'll sort you out mate yeah and therefore yeah. and then he went 
that do you, you don't want to do that that job do you, i'll do that don't worry about that yeah, oh, don't okay. worry. also just you saw this thing to make sure that i am in all meetings yeah, yeah. every meeting he he was in, essentially the president times two like the, the co-president it's very 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 peculiar yeah, but that um, is why the communication was so off on the day because he was in charge of it all yeah and it was everyone was running things different different war games different like um uh real life style events and stuff you know there's even that call uh to a to a um to one of the places one of these war one of the uh, norad operatives yeah saying, is this real world or or um whatever it is real world yeah or, is, this, uh, is is this uh is this training no is this training exercise, or is this real... ex exercise. Exercise. Oh, exercise yeah is this exercise or real world yeah like world. that but disbelief. how but you got to think that call happened how many times did he then have to say that no this is real world and how many yeah. times did that message then have to be passed along on top of the message of there's a plane been hijacked it's like how many times did that message have to be then passed up the line with the same right, yeah how much time wasted those people lot. are trained in that though this is this is where i get lost in the whole thing because those people are trained in doing that one thing like i get i get that it's a shock but things in that system happen probably happen a lot more than get let on to us right yeah you know, yeah because you, you know the amount of terrorist attacks that have probably been stopped that just don't have as big of an impact as 9 11 does because it happened yeah, yeah you know? and you, you you hear that like for instance um in a documentary um turning point when that that audio message that ben was just talking about where they were like is this real life or exercise there's more audio recordings of that message going further and further up the chain and you even hear one guy that receives the call um from a female operator saying that we've got a hijack situation we need you to get some uh jets up he sits there and says this is real this isn't training and then you hear someone behind him go a plane's been actually hijacked like it's just as just complete disarray and disbelief and no kind of oh okay yeah like oh it's real life right cool let's go for it everyone just seems to just be like oh my god it's oh it's actually happening oh it just yeah. sounds so unprofessional well, it's because it, I, I guess that's what those that it seems to me like dick cheney knew what he was doing that's I, that's the it, so I, this is let people the listeners know that until today i had i had, had no belief that this was an inside job or had anything to do with anyone it was just it, it was capitalized on after the event but right the actual event had nothing to do with there was no there was no fuckery involved in the actual event but the more i kind of got into the dick cheney thing and listening to different like people talk about that i'm more like actually did he because he once uh, before yeah one he was smart vice, evil guy yeah before he was vice president a lot of people will know this but if you don't know this he was ceo of a company called halliburton they were in charge of servicing oil fields he was mm -hmm. paid four million pounds a year and he decided to quit that job to become vice president so dean have you quit a job before yep uh when you quit how much did they pay you my if if i had any wages left over to pay that was it yeah. like jojo have you yeah. ever quit a job before yes uh when you quit how much did well. they pay you <laughs> how much money do they give you after you quit nothing right i've quit a job before i've quit a couple of jobs before i have never been given anything more than wages that worried me how much do you think um oh dick cheney was paid for quitting his job when he quit his job how much do you think money halliburton gave him and they service uh oil fields i assume it's a few it was ten nothing million. because he shouldn't have got any money because well, no, he well no he got no money but right? i yeah. thought usually he got I'm no gonna money say 10, 10 years his salary probably something like he that got 20 34 million, million pounds for quitting his job and guess who 34 million why? why why and why? guess in why? 2003 who got a no contest contract to uh service the oil fields in iraq do you know what i mean it's do you reckon it was stones. halliburton i believe it was it was one billion pound contract that's not a bad return do you know what i mean that's like that's the smoking gun of it all 
Like, oh, they, well, what's that? Who are the contractors that do it? Oh, they're mine. Oh, sure. What I a coincidence. I guess I'm but the best. I quit. I, I quit. I never, I quit there. So it's got no, I've got no connections to them whatsoever. No. It's just <laughs> that for me was like, oh. Okay. Okay. And then the, the more you hear about how he was fighting for certain controls and access to certain areas and, you know, um, you know, like well, he wants his ears everywhere, doesn't he? Yeah, well, because he because if everywhere. he's in, he he can control policy, and from every angle before George Bush even hears about it. So I I, yeah. I genuinely think George Bush has no Practi practically no a patsy and no and no blame for it. Yeah, but he obviously practically a patsy. Yeah, because they don't, you know they don't talk they never talk to each other after the first term. Yeah, that's weird. George Bush blamed. Cheney and rightly so for ruining his presidency, like for, yeah. for sullying it and 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 just putting a bad name on it. And they yeah. didn't talk, so they did. They only spoke recently, apparently. But they, yeah, they hated each other. They despise each other. But yeah, anyway. Okay, nine thirty one a.m. Speaking from Florida, President Bush calls the events in New York City an apparent terrorist attack on our country. He also calls people folks. These folks folks. Are gonna pay. These <laughs> folks. Like, These folks. Fox. 9.37 a.m. Hijackers aboard flight 77 crashed the plane into west into the western facade of the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., killing 59 aboard the plane and 125 military and civilian personnel this is another weird inside one. the building. This is a weird one. I mean, if you ignore the fact that people think it was a missile because the frame rate on the webcam doesn't show a plane because it's like one frame a second or whatever. Right, yeah. It's also... Th the only side of the Pentagon that had been recently refurbished to be... Yeah more um robust for yep which is crazy right and there was no one in it so it was odd only coincidence it was a odd. few people in it compared to the rest of the pentagon which had like four hundred thousand people in it yeah, this was the uh, only it was it was very convenient or it's a it's an odd co convenient but i don't know whether it's just coincidence i don't know i, I because don't he know. did it because the, the the way that they describe it is that the plane did a like a, like a, a, a military movement yeah and then came back round so he went over and then went round and then hit that specific side of the pentagon when he could have just yeah. dropped down and hit that one the or he could have just, just yeah just destroyed the whole side like would have destroyed four layers this didn't get yeah. break through the first layer because the pe pentagon is like four layers isn't it yes it is yeah 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 so again that's that for me is like a weird there's one a, yeah there's a lot on the pentagon that i know we're all going to go over a lot yeah um because i've got i've got that i think that if 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 i put my tin foil hat points towards the pentagon more so than the towers themselves yeah like yeah um okay so 9 42 uh, a.m for the first time in history the faa grounds all flights over or bound for the continental united states over the next two and a half hours some 3,300 commercial flights and 1,200 private planes are guided to land at airports in Canada and the United States. Uh, 9.45 a.m. amid escalating rumors of other attacks, the White House and U.S. Capitol building are evacuated, along with numerous other high-profile buildings, landmarks, and public spaces. Uh, 9.59 a.m., the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapses. Um, I, uh, I obviously remember seeing the tower collapse, and I think that was possibly more shocking than seeing the plane hit in real life. Yeah, like that is horrible and completely unexpected. Yep, there was, was no, no one was expecting that to happen. No, and in the way that it did, um, I think I, I remember watching it and just. At first, I didn't believe what I saw. Like, what I know people say, oh, I didn't believe what I saw. But I generally was just like, what is this? Like, yeah. why is the building falling down? Like, it, looking back at it now, of course the building's going to fall down. But yeah. back then, it just reality it, just. And if you watch the footage now and you watch it with like more like, uh, like educated, research, we're educated and research head on, you see that corner buckle. Yeah, you and see it goes, bow. Oh, you're like, and it goes boing like that, and yeah. it's yeah, it's just it snaps like a pack of cards. Like you oh. see the moment, it's like yeah, tada! I'll see you later. And you, I, yeah, every time I watch it, like last night I watched um, the last two nights I've been watching 
stuff and i go to mm. bed going oh my god like, i genuinely uh, feel quite like it makes me feel weird right yeah so like yeah it's a fucking oh yeah watching it <laughs> is weird okay uh nine oh no yeah nine fifty nine. i mentioned that the tower had obviously collapsed okay at 10 7 a.m after passengers and crew members aboard the hijacked flight 93 contact friends and family and learn about the attacks in new york in washington they mount an attempted reta uh, an, an attempt to retake the plane in response hijackers deliberately cr crashed the plane into a field in somerset county pennsylvania killing all 40 passengers and the crew uh, aboard the yeah. target of flight 93 isn't known for sure but was believed to be on the way to attack either the white house or the u.s capital i think um after like um in the, like interrogation and stuff it was it was believed to be the capitol building yes yeah, yeah um, i think that that image is another crazy one because you see the outline of the plane then you in the mud just a burn like a char of a plane it's i i i remember seeing one angle of the impact and you could actually like you could see how far like the the gouge into the earth had gone mm. and it, no wonder they barely found anything do you know what i mean yeah. like i can't begin to imagine what that you know what felt. i haven't found you know we're it's so far in recent obviously i'm not touching the conspiracy stuff that much yet but that's going to be tomorrow which can be painful mm. and very yeah. because he's gonna have to watch some crazy shit the, remember they were saying oh we found a passport we found a passport well i've not seen that since they've not mentioned that so i'm not no. sure if i made that up in my head or not i i, I no, don't know I remember hearing that yeah but i don't yeah i don't know on whether... any of the new documentaries they've not mentioned those passports they're not going to mention anything on the documentaries though are they because that's yeah. a conspiracy that's the mm. you know they yeah, don't even yeah. the, the thing is with the new documentaries they don't even hide the fact that what what they were really doing like they're kind of like oh that's a consequence two terrorists flew into the buildings and it's like but this is why and this is why we yeah went they up do, and did it afterwards yeah they it's don't like, like they don't yeah. go it was unprovoked they, at no point do they, they say it was an unprovoked attack which is like right. which they had been for for for, for 20 years oh we knew nothing about it yeah and the, yeah, yeah and that's the, yeah i think you did that's a bad intelligence very bad intelligence yeah so oh, yeah sorry. obviously the next thing <laughs> so, the next thing that happens uh is um that the north tower the first tower to hit collapses 102 minutes after being struck by flight 11 the collapse of the second tower only took about 10 seconds that's madness I think isn't that's it? because it was hit higher right yes they believe it was hit no it was um oh no, oh, no was it, it was hit lower yeah. yeah it was here no, it was hit it was in the hit 90s lower. No, no it was it hit was... higher it's hit nine in the 90s. oh right okay so there was yeah, less was... weight at the top that's why it took, didn't take so that's, that's why, why it, it buckled quickly but it fell quicker because it 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 went straight down like there were yeah it, yeah because it took out all the central columns i believe the plane mm. did that is uh okay so uh, 11 a.m mayor rudolph uh giuliani oh yeah literally him. the most ridiculous man on the planet yeah uh calls for the evacuation of lower manhattan south of canal street including more than 1 million residents workers and tourists as efforts continue throughout the afternoon to search for survivors at the world trade center site only 12 survivors were pulled from the rubble after the collapse of the towers a lot of the firefighters who survived interviewed after uh said they all assumed they wouldn't be coming back out yeah th what? that's that's one of the things that gets me every time you like oh. we looked at each other and it was it was like an unspoken thing shook hands we, yeah like shook hands like this is goodbye imagine going up like Going up, because they none of them thought the towers were going to collapse though did they that's the, the no. other thing it's like they thought they'd probably die out there helping people they, none of them thought that they were going to die and get crushed to death yeah like i i and I, do, do you know the, one of the most haunting ones that got me though was when in the um turning point documentary where one of the firefighters uh no sorry one of the civilians or i think it was the the the, the marriott hotel reception yeah. dude when he was saying when he walked out all he could hear was these uh oh, well God. he said he could hear the noises of uh devices that firefighters wear that if they're not in motion for more than 30 seconds they start sounding oh. now for years for years i remember hearing that sound on clips of 9 11 and in other yeah. documentaries and i was like 
how on earth are there like alarms going off? Like, I was like, how? Like, how mm. is that possible? And to hear that those were actually the sounds of dead firefighters, there was, it was right. just sounded like mosquitoes. Like, they're every, it was everywhere. It's that's and that it just got me like horribly, man. Massively, massive reality is like, fuck. That is, that sound in the background is just loads of people that have died. It's just a and siren of death. Like, yeah. and, and, uh, it was like that kind of thing. Oh, I remember sitting there and almost welling up. I was just like, it was just so. I couldn't imagine being a human being in that moment and experiencing an event that just showed you how fucking minute you are and how everything that you take for granted, you see around you in a fucking blink could be gone. Just yeah. gone. And for like, hundreds of thousands of people in a second just taken away like to experience that in real life to understand how finite you are must have been so life-changing for so many people like and i can't begin to even fathom what would have been going through your heads and just being like well is everything really worth it like what what the hell yeah it's crazy it's just horrifying man um absolutely horrifying just uh just a little bit of a little tip back that i've remembered uh the war games thing that was run by dick cheney was called vigilant guardian and that's the thing, that's vigilant. what was happening vigilant guardian was one of the ones that was happening on um on 9 11 one of the, one of them one of his his devised operations it's called vigilant guardian vigilant guardian well, we'll touch on that we'll get into more of that tomorrow just yeah what I, okay. what I remember 1 p.m. at Barksdale, uh, Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana, President Bush announces that the U.S. military forces are on high alert worldwide. Yeah. This is two. Too... During all of this, President Bush has flown from Florida to Barksdale to in to Louisiana to somewhere. Then he flies to Nebraska. Yeah, to Nebraska, and then back to Washington because they're trying. Obviously, it's either they're trying to keep him safe because they claims that Air Force One was next. Right. Or Dick Cheney's or, like, don't let him come back to it. I'm in charge. Yeah, because he was he's at the, the White, White House, House in the bunker that. running shit. Yep. And yeah, he's jumping around and dotting around. Yeah, it's so, so many red yeah. flags, man. There's that moment I, when um, George Bush is told that this is, it's fucked. Like, that yeah. he, you genuinely see that he, he has nothing to do with this. And he is like, fuck. How yeah, do I? I'm, he's I'm, gen- but he and he said in that in uh, inside the the president's war room because he goes, I've got to show, can't I've got to be calm and if I get up now and just walk off while their kids are reading, people yeah. will be panicked. I've got yep. to sit here and listen to the book, get up and leave, and then deal with it. And it's like his eyes, you see his face change, and he's just thinking that face of someone thinking like, what the fuck. Do I do? every a million things at once just brrr. yeah i did I, have you seen have either of you watched inside the president's war room no not yet watch it because it i know he's like he you know he was part of that regime but like genuinely think george bush wasn't a bad guy i don't think he was a bad no. guy but dick cheney yeah. is the most evil man he's the penguin he is the yeah. batman's he is the penguin <laughs> he is the non-likable danny devito Oh, it's the worst, man. Okay. 2.51 p.m., the U.S. Navy dispatches missile destroyers to New York and Washington, D.C. Uh, At 5.20 p.m., the 47-story 7th World Trade Center collapses after burning for hours. The building had been evacuated in the morning, and there were no casualties, though the uh, collapse forces uh, rescue workers to flee for their lives. It is the uh, the last of the Twin Towers to fall. That we're gonna probably touch on that oh, with yeah, a lot yeah. well, because a lot going on. A lot My of important one, shit in that building. Yeah, including the 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 proof that Queen Elizabeth is illegitimate to the throne. Uh, yeah, and apparently it was going to come out on September the twelfth that. <laughs> And the real rightful king of England would be crowned. Oh that is yes, my that favorite guy. one, King yeah. John. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite one. I won't talk about that tomorrow now, I've said it. Um, six, uh, <laughs> 6.58 p.m., President Bush returns to the White House after uh, stops at military bases in Louisiana and Nebraska. 
8.30 p.m., President Bush addresses the nation, calling the attacks evil, despicable acts of terror, and declaring that America, its friends and allies, would stand together to win the war against terrorism. Um, uh, yeah, or, of so course, potentially the whole thing was a hologram. <laughs> that bit. Yeah, that's that's mine. That's my bit. So, that, yeah, that is the, the events of 9-11. Uh, and with with sprinkles of conspiracy for you, sprinkles of seeds of doubt and and information. Um, and before we, had, do you want to read those? Yeah, I was going to. was going to go. Into, so the yeah. the nine eleven tax. So the, like I said at the beginning, before we started this timeline, like it was an actual thing, and people actually died and gave their lives for for this. Uh, the nine eleven tax killed two thousand nine hundred ninety six people four of which were emergency personnel such as fire for firefighters and policemen the number of people injured was over 6000 so it was it was an incredible like loss of life it was a massive event that if when we get into part 2 where we talk about the conspiracy if you think that like and like I do generally think now that Dick Cheney had way more prior knowledge than yes than he let on and i think it was definitely his design that the FBI and the CIA and the NSA and I don't talk to each other. I think it was by design because he yeah. knew that he could have enough information and keep enough people in the dark that he could let this happen. So, yeah. the, you know, he, he was loathed by the end of his career yeah. anyway, but is it estimated the attack caused a minimum, a minimum of 10 billion in infrastructure and property damage? The cost of the cleanup was seven hundred and fifty million dollars, and it is estimated it's estimated that the cost of the actual attack only cost five hundred thousand dollars to take it. Fuck you know. So the return, like, if Al Qaeda's plan was to cause a fuck ton of damage on a small amount of money, they did. It. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Uh, knowing that Saudi Arabia is an ally to the USA, no. it is important to know that nineteen of the hijackers. Most of the 19 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia. Wow, wow, and, wow. Um, and then another harrowing statistic to kind of end this and to let you know, like, you know, think about this, that, that at least 200 people jumped from the towers during the blitz. Two, yeah, 200 people. 200 people jumped. Uh, the fall lasted less than 10 seconds. Rather than suicide, these deaths were ruled as homicides at the hands of terrorists, which is, I think nice because yes yeah actually in america it would not surprise me if they were classed as suicides and no one got their health insurance yeah yeah i think that that for me is probably the most human thing i've read about america in a while yeah um that they're that they're willing to do that um but yeah that was the history and the day of 9 11 of 9 11 uh i hope that a fair amount of people have probably been surprised with the fact that the conspiracy goes further than just holographic uh, buildings and, I don't know, weird Aleister Crowley religious yeah. ba based deity worshipping. Yeah. We'll get to that, I imagine. And, <laughs> and for all those uh, statistical uh, people out there, uh, only 0.95% of the, or no, of, of Less than one of the hijackers was a pedophile. <laughs> Less than one. One had a think about it once. Yeah. One searched yeah. something but Five didn't act on yeah. his impulses. <laughs> yeah. So it puts it all in perspective, doesn't it, really? Oh, man. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for um, watching. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, JJ, you did you enjoy that history lesson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was... <laughs> what would before before we end because we're going to end now because we're going to go into the conspiracy um tomorrow what is what were your what were your views on 9 11 like and the the the, t the attack on the twin towers before uh, today i mean the the thing is with with any anything like this is that it is like what you said earlier on about how could so many people not know if there was something else going on mm. And even the Dick Cheney thing just immediately was just like, yeah, it's it was all about money. There's so many concepts and they all seem to boil down to money. And again, we'll talk about them tomorrow because there is so many of them and they're all they're all monetary based. None of them mm. are 
I mean, again, a lot of those people. One of those magic. Died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot of people died. But when you actually look at how many people could have potentially died, mm. it almost feels like it could have been a quite well executed attack right. from the, the American the American end. Yeah. You but, know what I mean? And then like, the, the other way. Could have potentially 250,000 people died, but yeah. just over 2,000 people died. Yeah. It, in the towers themselves, not yeah. from the fallout from it all. You know, yeah. the, kind of when we look at the statistics of the aftermath tomorrow, mm. I think a lot more people will be like, yeah, this makes a lot more sense. But, yeah. mm. but you got, I mean, I don't believe in eye for an eye and tit for tat and all that, but you got to think how many innocent people have the American kill, Americans killed? Yeah. God like, knows. Yeah. Don't even want to count. It's just yeah. like, it's like to them, it's collateral for financial and exactly. financial cartel. Yeah, but, right. know, it, it shows like how you can. It's propaganda, is what it is, isn't it? It's like, look, they killed, they like they killed innocent Americans. Like we should go and fuck them up. It's like, yeah, but the the way they see it is, you've killed tens of thousands of innocents, mm. and they're kind of fuck you up. And yeah, which, well, I, again, it... again, I don't agree with it, and that's not my view on no. it. I was like, just. Like it's, she was on the other foot. You got it's like that saying: a million's a statistics, uh, one's a tragedy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Ugh. ladies and gentlemen, that ends episode one of Nine Eleven by Not Another Conspiracy Podcast. Hey. Make sure that you're in the Discord. Uh, you're on the Instagram that neither none of us can remember the password for. <laughs> We've got Twitter. I've got the password for the Twitter um but the discord is telegram there's a telegram now um don't tell people that well yeah but <laughs> we, we don't even one. know the one passwords so i, I mean think i know can... it i think i know it now now you don't tell them that, that. No, i'm not gonna tell, tell don't them tell that. them that one because they're all the same um <laughs> remember i think I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably still use the code nac at checkout for og socks right yes so yes, hey, I've got mine on. Today, nice. I'm not Go wearing socks. I'm not even and wearing any pants. If so. you want to get, <laughs> if you want to record a podcast or do some filming or photography, you can use the code NAC at hellfirestudio.co.uk. Oh no, that's wrong. Hellfirestudio.uk, uh, and you could be like not another conspiracy podcast or Cryptid Ramblers or Then and Now podcast. All the other podcasts that happen here, you know. So don't forget NAC. It's the same for everything. Uh, but thank you very much for listening and we'll thank see you. you in part two. Bye bye. What happens? When it comes to it, in the big hole, maybe we did. Oh! It's a bit of a isn't it? I feel a light brown jacket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cool story. <laughs>